Well, hello, crew. Welcome to another episode of Ask a Photo Pro with your friendly neighborhood host. It is me, Cardi. I'm here ready to look at so many photos, and it seems there is there's a lot of photos. And there's a lot of you who are submitting at the wire, meaning submitting your photos at five minutes to six on the last day. And because of that, and because there are so many photo reviews now, we're going to have to start putting in some limits, meaning obviously there's one photo each, but <clears throat> the last day to submit is going to be Wednesday. It's not going to be Thursday. The day of the submission is going to be the day before. So you're going to have to get your submissions in the day before because the submissions double the day of. So it's going to force you to actually be on it. It's going to force you to actually have to act and shoot and work on the stuff and get it submitted so it's not last minute. So my episodes aren't three hours long. Cool? All right, so one submission, cutoff is Wednesday midnight. And in fact, I do have the power to turn off that folder. So I'm gonna give my mods the control to turn off that folder and then not turn it back on until I give the next submission, just so my submissions are limited because again, it's great value in submissions, but the early bird gets the worm and time is valuable. And I can't, I can't be doing three hour streams. I just can't. And you know, if you submit, I'm going to look at it. So let's just try to get those submissions in by Wednesday. All right, let's get into your favorite show of the week where we look at some real photo reviews. How we do this, by the way, is you gotta join the Discord. The Discord is where all of this ha happens. I have an incredible photography community of over 800 super active photographers that are all like you. They're all trying to be a working professional photographer. They are all trying to ditch their nine to five life and transition into making uh making a living as a 21st century content creator so ah, that's what's going on and also my master class is about to go on if you've been asking me about my master class it happens this weekend it happens on sunday and i already am pretty much almost at the limit you do have an opportunity i am gonna restrict how many people can join once we start getting into some unmanageable numbers but you can still join. You go to thecardimethod.substack.com. Um, yeah, I'll make some sort of uh, thecardimethod.substack.com. This probably, well, I'll make it clickable. Substack. I'm just putting it in chat right now for those of you who are watching. And if you're seeing this after the fact, I will make sure that I put it in my show notes. Make sure you join. Um, it's a paid thing, um, but it is a very reasonable price and is a great way for you to get one-on-one -on -one instruction, especially if you can't afford my mentorship. All right, let's get into this week's photo reviews. The, what I asked you for was a magazine cover. I asked you for a magazine cover. So let's go back to... Um, Wow, I, I'm, I'm looking back to, how far do we go back here as far as pictures I haven't looked at? All right, the 16th, yeah, okay, this is all. All right, where is my magazine cover start? All right, it starts here. All right, our first magazine cover comes from daryl this be mine being mindful of the cover and header text um daryl let's go let's see daryl's first submission daryl as far as trying to nail a cover i think that you really understood what i meant as far as masthead and understanding the distance and giving your your subject scale but 
it's a little bit too much scale in this context because if you look at where the head or the eye line is dropping, it's actually dropping below the 50% line. You could have literally dropped his head here and still had enough room to make an 8x10 after the fact and have a cover. Although I think it's a really good attempt. I still think that he's a little bit low. Secondly, the file quality. If I'm looking at this file quality, it's soft and it's soft because it's at a super high ISO, a higher ISO than I think is necessary for where you're shooting. Looking at your settings, you're shooting at um, 2.8 at ISO 3200 at a hundredth of a second. So in that case, it means that where you're shooting is there's no light. The light is gone. If you have to shoot at 3200 in order to get a hundredth of a second shutter speed. So this is why your image is noisy. You have to be shooting in better scenarios with better light. The background, yes. The, the concept, yes. The composition, almost. But the time of day, the light was gone. And if that's the case, you if you don't have artificial light to be able to light outdoors, you have to shoot during the right time of day because that's what caught you there. Again, a very, very good attempt, but I want you to work on shooting ISOs no higher than like 1600. You know what I mean? Especially if that's what 3200 looks like. It's too noisy and nail your focus. You got to make sure that you nail your focus when your ISO is super high. That's a place where we get lost is the focus. So that's my advice for you. As far as the cover composition and the editorial vibe, you nailed it. So great job on that, Daryl. Thank you. Thank you for being our first submission of the day, my friend. All right. Let's see who else we got. Our next submission is from Joss. Joss says an improvised session. Um, first submission from our view. Um, it's, I would like to set it as my under low standard. Um, how do you manage these light situations? Let's just have a look at this photo here. So um, this is a spontaneous cover vibe. I, which I appreciate. I'm noticing, first of all, let's look at the cover composition. The cover composition you definitely understood and understand, but the place that you're putting her, I don't really agree with. And I don't really agree with a female leaning with this body language because it makes them look frumpy, which is not, it's not ever sexy. It doesn't matter what the outfit ha they have. When you have a girl leaning like that, it just doesn't look flattering. We have to have her long and tall. Secondly, everything that's happening in here is super distracting. Like, I don't know what this woman with her hands over her face means, and I can't read what that says, so I don't know what that means. And I don't really believe that any of that is relevant to the photo. And... If I'm putting this on my magazine cover, understand that I need this space here to put stuff about what's in the magazine. I need this space here to put what's in the magazine. I need this space here to put what's in the magazine as every cover does. So our covers have to be non-distracting and have to work with text. So again, move her over shoot at a, a different depth of field that makes this blow out or in fact just use the sky as the background have her stand up top on this and aim up at her move over this way so this is no longer a factor and that's how you make it happen okay because right here i can't see what's happening this side or what's happening this side but i do know that this sign likely continues so the only thing that I can see as open, clear space is up here. So have her stand up here. That's the platform. Have her move this way because I'm sure this goes over here. Have her stand here and then this is your background. I hope that helps. That is a submission from Joss B. Well done. All right. Into Scott Gunnerson. Scott shooting with the R5 with a 50. 
All right, Scott, let's have a look at you. I like the still lifes that you do. I do. I like the still lifes a lot that you do. I'm also, I'm very wary of your processing. I want to make sure that you're not losing shadow detail, like you're losing a little bit in here, just a little bit in here. But let's look at it as cover composition. As cover composition, this is aces. It looks really strong. I like the, I like how you have room here for an eight by 10, but you also have really, really strong cover composition. I really like this a lot. Um, I love the gradient in the background, the way that it goes from darker here um, into like a light, but I want you to watch your edge. The edge of this foam core is picking up because that edge is a little bit, um, it's been banged up as you can see a little bit over here. So these edges, we can take that out in post. Um, that's something that like I notice. So any of this, you can just take out and post. Um, and also, um, also images over here. There we go. Hello, there it is. So next, uh, a reflector. I like what you're doing with the light. Uh, I like what you're doing with the light. I'm trying to see where the light's coming from. This looks like it's top light coming down this way. But I also see the way the reflectors, the, the shade. Yeah, I guess that that could still be from top light. And just based on what's happening under here, I would say a reflector, because you're doing top light, I would put a reflector here and a reflector here to kick back in the light that's bouncing from down here. Just to fill in under here a little bit more, Scott, I think that that would make a really big difference. Quality wise, the file quality is great. And this is the file quality that I expect from you. This is really great. Low ISO, low grain, super sharp, great composition. And you gave yourself enough room on the edges here. You see this cut here, like when this goes to print, unfortunately, when all, when all images that we're shooting for magazines go to print, they actually, we lose about that much all the way around the image. We lose about that much, which is about an eighth of an inch. So I want you to consider that when it comes to how close you put your images and how close you put stuff to the edges of your images. And you did a really great job here, Scott. This is great. Good job. All right going to be hard to pick photos of the week this week okay we have Anyana. Anyana's submission shot with a nikon d7500 all right um so her birthday was earlier this month and her sister gifted her an, a newer battery power strobe <laughs> a newer battery powered strobe new member let's go hey alpha monk congratulations for jumping on and becoming a member welcome thank you you get the smoke Every time somebody becomes a member, I like to burn my place down. So um, you're going to see a whole bunch of smoke just filling my space here, as we like to do. I actually have the smoke low today, so I'm going to have to fix that. All right, let's get into Anyana with the newer strobe. Anyana, well done. Really well done here. Now, a light meter is crucial because once you get a light meter, then you're really able to nail the exposure. Same thing is happening as far as the headspace with your image. You can see now how far from the top this is. And yes, we would crop this picture and adjust it accordingly, but you're not using enough of the sensor. Again, what I want you to watch is our eye line our eye line is low. And what we're hoping for is our eye line at least at the middle of the frame. And we're hoping to get the top of the head leaving about, ah, maybe not that low. Maybe the top of the head can go as high as here. So it's tricky, but 
I love the fact that you nailed a lot of things. Number one, you nailed the non-distracting background. You nailed the concept as far as like having something cool in her hair. And again, the pose is a little fake. The pose is a little fake, but, and the more experience that you get, the more you learn how to make these poses less fake. Exposure is not far off. It's quite, it's quite close. But again, I want you to make sure that you at some point get a meter. So you're able to take a reading right here under the chin and get like super, super accurate skin. I want you to notice how her hand tone and her skin tone are actually different. Her skin is darker than her hand. And you can only notice that when you put her hand next to her face in order for us to be able to draw that comparison. Um, again, I think that that has to do with the foundation. I think that she has foundation on her face and I think that the foundation doesn't match her, doesn't match her actual skin tone. I think her foundation is dark and I think because her foundation is dark, it's making me feel like the exposure is dark. So again, light meter and secret time when a model comes out of a chair, when a subject comes out of a chair, do like this. Look here and see where the face ends and the neck begins and see what that blend is like. If you see a, dis a difference from this in this, this is why modern makeup artists don't use foundation. <laughs> foundation is so like, honestly, with makeup, foundation is it, it, like, only sometimes and when they do it they're blending like three colors together and they're doing patches and tests to make sure that it blends like seamlessly so make although this is minimal makeup and it might even just be her makeup like her doing her own makeup again these are things that i notice exposure is just a little bit low and headspace is a bit low but overall you should be really happy with this attempt and as far as your light placement your light placement is really good like be proud of all the elements that you have that are working the propping in the hair the blue background you need to pull her off the background just a little bit because you see how i see this shadow back here this is your subject I mean, this is your background and this is your subject and this is where your light is. And because the light is coming this way and because of the invert, the angle of incidence, I mean, light travels in straight line, like you're here, you're going to catch a little bit of that shadow the closer she goes to the wall. The further she comes away from the wall, the more that that shadow falls off of where the background is. So again, she's just a little bit too up on the wall as well. Small things, New easy to fix, easy to fix. Hey, Steve, welcome. Thanks for becoming a member. I appreciate you. Let's uh, engulf my place in some smoke because, you know, I did just get some new, I got some new smoke juice. So I'm like, let's, let's smoke it up. Let's go. All right. Thanks for becoming a member, Steve. I appreciate you. All right, let's get into our next submission. You did a great job, by the way, Anyana. You did a great job. This, for your first time shooting with strobes, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Just keep, 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 keep going, keep going. And watch some of my lighting videos, please. Watch some, some of me in the studio shooting. And also, when you're shooting real people that aren't models, shoot them as real people. Don't try to make a real person look like a model. Models are size two they're 510 and they rock the fashion you know what i mean shoot real people like real people just shoot portraits practice how to light portraits once you start getting into crazy fashiony poses it starts to look artificial work on that okay all right let's get into the next shooter is mike stimatsi stimatsi all right I, I i don't really have a niche yet but i love black and white Fortunately, black and white is not a niche. That is a technique. Um, let's get into Mike's cover submission. Mike Stigmatzi. All right, Mike, let's look at this as a cover. As a cover, it's good composition. I definitely see what you're doing. But the, the thing is, is the pose of this item, um, it looks like a lamp 
and the way that the legs kind of go out means that you're actually clipping, which you did, you clipped the toe. You are very focused on keeping this centralized, which I see that, but in doing that, we're leaving lots of space here. That's odd because this it does create an off balance down here that isn't countered over there. So how you fix that is by just pushing this over just a little bit. Now, the assignment was shooting a cover in your niche. Now, this is a ceramic figure that looks like it could be a lamp or something like that. Basically, it's a ceramic figure. I'm trying to figure out what cover of what magazine this would go on. Like that, like compositionally, the fact that you isolated the subject with light, cool. I'm thinking more subject matter is key. Like there's nobody who's hiring you to take pictures of these kinds of figurines for magazine covers. So I want you to be really thinking like, what is my niche? Are you shooting people, places, or things? And if you're shooting things, and this is a thing, well, then it's got to be a thing that people want to buy, like a desirable thing, an Apple product or something like that. And if you're trying to say your niche is black and white, I'll say again, black and white is not a niche. It is a technique. And also shooting in black and white and saying, I will only shoot in black and white, you are eliminating literally 80% of the clients who could hire you because in 2024, people want to see color, the color of the product. My Apple watch has a yellow strap. Like they want to see the fact that like it's got green details, like color is a thing. Like there's a novelty in black and white. But if you just look at my commercial photography, how much of my commercial, like this year, oh my God, I had billboards that were in black and white. Billboards, wow. But it's like, guess what? That image, you can they could have used it in color as well. You know? So black and white is not a niche. Black and white is a technique. And in choosing to shoot only black and white, unless you're a fine art photographer that has a, an extensive body of work that you're selling as print sales you're making books and pe and you have an audience of willing buyers that are buying that black and white photography it's hard to be a commercial contemporary photographer just shooting black and white and nicheless meaning shooting photos and, and sharing photos of like um tchotchkes it's just you're just looking around saying, okay, what can I shoot that I can sh make in a cover composition to deliver? You know what I mean? Which again, serves the assignment, but it doesn't serve you. And I'm here to serve you and try to help you find a niche and become a, a, someone who brings value. And you can't bring value by being lost and, and, and randomly trying to sh find things to shoot as covers. You know what I mean? I hope that helps. Um, that is Mike and Mike's cover submission. Thank you kindly. All right, let's get into our next photographer. Our next shooter is Shonda. Shonda says my first submission. I don't have a niche yet, but I wanna try my hand at product photography. Um, when I was thinking, making this photo, I was thinking about craft magazines. Um, okay, I doubt there's a large market of people who want to make D&D &D monsters out of felt. Um, but crafting. Okay, got it. Shot with a 100 millimeter. Um, got it. Okay, let's have a look at Chandra. This picture definitely fits as a cover. I appreciate um, the effort. The subject matter for me is a little bit um, is a little bit lacking, although I do appreciate the idea and the attempt. Where I say the subject matter is a bit lacking, it's just if it's a craft magazine, like I feel like there's got to be a little bit more lifestyle. Like you shot it like a studio image but with there's no context so then it looks like a product shot but then you're putting in the like um this element which is like okay yeah this is what um 
seamstresses and sewers use to hold their needles like I got that so I'm thinking like how could we shoot this outside and how could we make a, a set behind this or make it look more like um some sort of a world you know I think that what you have going is you understand how to shoot a cover you understand cover composition but the lighting is where the lighting is definitely like very basic like it's it's exposed properly but there's no like real lighting i would love to help you develop light and as far as your niche it can't be so targeted as to like i shoot crafts or like it, it, it that's too like it's got to be product photography it's got to be things like that's that's a niche that's broad enough for you to expand within it but niched enough that people who are needing pictures of their things can hire you to shoot them so i think it would help you to practice on shooting actual products because um shooting felt is very tricky with reflections and all this stuff and also sorry to be so dry it's just not interesting it's just not interesting <laughs> you know what i mean and this dnd &D kind of neat it's so hyper niche that item like here's the thing grab your iphone try to learn how to shoot an iphone do you know how hard that is to shoot an iphone take it out of its case shine it up put it like put it on a surface and like technology shoot airpods like headphones there's like tech there's a huge market for consumer electronics learn how to shoot consumer electronics that people use every day you know what i mean and practice on them rather than um this particular thing <laughs> that you shot although the composition you nailed i think that there's no question that you understand cover composition i think that you nailed that perfectly um I just want to see you do this with um, better, more interesting subject matter. I hope that helps. All right. That was Shonda. All right, Shonda. Let's get into our next submitter is Tyler. Tyler, shout to 5D Mark III. Um, ISO 1000. No, uh, sorry, ISO 400. Shot at a thousandth of a second, my bad um older photo redone edit okay let's have a look at your editorial cover tyler all right tyler good 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 attempt good attempt i like it good attempt it's you definitely you cropped this for me to 9 by 12 which is more than fine this is magazine proportions i'll just change the cover proportions accordingly um, I don't mind this. I mean, it shot a little wide angle for me. And when you're shooting wide angle, it exaggerates things. Like we have a small head and we have this big foot. Like if you look at the proportion of his foot versus the proportion of this foot, it looks like his feet are out of proportion. So for me, I like what you're trying and the leading line and the sky like I definitely see what you have going on here and there is room for masthead text and such like that like I do have room to drop what the magazine is about but I can't get past this foot this foot is just so obnoxiously huge and so obnoxiously huge because of the distortion from shooting a person vertical wide angle whenever you shoot a person vertical wide angle like it's a thing like platon Welcome. does it irving penn thanks for joining us cartwright um irving penn did it but when you're pushing like things really front into the lens it starts to get weird how you fix this picture is you have him arrange his legs differently you have him have both his legs up so both his feet are side by side and you have him holding both of his legs or leaning his arms on both of his legs so that's off the top just why we don't shoot wide angle um with people vertically because of proportion and secondly just a little bit of exposure in here like although it it is 
fine. It's not popping. And, and where the light is coming from is kind of, you're in an open shade situation, like the light is kind of gone, which is fine, but it's just the overall exposure here. Like I kind of want this to be plus a quarter of a stop, like 0.25 maybe. See what that looks like. It's gonna just make it feel a little bit more snappy. Um, I definitely appreciate what you did here. I definitely see what you saw. I think it's a really good attempt, Tyler, honestly. I think it's a good attempt. I want you to be very wary of the wide angle vertical because it's, it's a style. So it's like, <sighs> look at magazine covers you'll see wide angle on a magazine cover exactly zero times. It's almost always shot with a normal perspective or a short telephoto. So again, little bit of advice. I think you did a great attempt, but again, old photography, show me something new. You know what I mean? You shoot different than back then. Show me something new. I hope that helps you, my friend. Let's look at our next photographer. Um, this is Prodlong's sword um, shot a roommate with a couple of LEDs. Um, I saw 160th F2 Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera. Prodlong's sword. All right, Prodlong, let's have a look at this image. So, a couple of LEDs. Um, let's see, I think you've pre cropped this to 9 by 12. Yes, ish ish not exactly but um I, I like what you're trying i like what you're trying here i think that this is a really good attempt i think this is a really good attempt the exposure is good it, it's one of those crops where you're just right in the face the fact that he's giving the finger the jewelry the earring like the little bit of eyeliner it kind of looks like i have room to put like um you know, I have room here to draw text for my cover. It works for me. I really like this a lot. I think that this is a good, good job. Honestly, this is a really good job, Prodlong. I think you should be thrilled with this image. This is banging, banging. Really hard to get the saturation I think that you want with LED, color LEDs. Once you start using strobes, light you're going to learn a little bit more about light placement i'm not going to bust your balls too much about the like blue on white skin tone and how it kind of makes people look a little bit dead for this picture it just works it's just a vibe but again as you get more experience with light placement i'll, I'll help you place lights a little bit better than the way that you're just one on one side one on the other side shining at him you know what i mean i'll help you get a little bit more complicated with the light this is a really good attempt good job good job all right that's prodlong sword all right let's see someone else miss jennifer first time submitting first time in studio with model studying lighting trying to find my niche Continuous light, no softbox. Um, ISO 1250, because you're using um, continuous. Okay, let's have a look here at your composition. Right off the top, folks, I want you to, um, I want you to ask yourself, what is wrong with this picture? First of all, for me, it is the proportions the proportions to this photo are not right this is nor an 8 by 12 meaning full frame from your camera nor is it like it feels like it's a 7 by 12. you know what i mean meaning you cropped something left and right pushed it in but left the height and sent it to me we have to have our photos like exact proportion you can see here this is cropped to 9 by 12. you can see here this is cropped to 9 by 12. but i want to show you one from my earlier submissions that is the full picture so you can see the difference of the full picture and how you can't hide watch this 
that is the full picture. This is your picture. Same height, different width. So because I had to change these proportions here with my cover, imagine that is a cover on an 8x12 and this is yours. So there's something happening with your proportions. That's my first thing. Why are you cropping pictures narrower than your camera says? What is happening just here? What's happening over here and over here? Is there something there that you're trying to crop out? We can't free crop. It doesn't work like that with photography. We don't get to just make sizes that we think look nice because it doesn't work. When you look at websites, every photo has to be the same proportion because you and also magazines. When we turn magazine pages, the pages don't change proportion in between. So with our shots, be very locked on when it comes to proportion of your vertical frame. Next thing is gifted member. Oh, calligraphy and the gifteds. You man, every single episode and your generosity. Uh, I, I tell you to stop doing this. You've been doing this for so long, but thank you. But stop. New but member. Thank you. My man or woman, Felicia. Felicia Cheadle, you just got gifted a membership by Calligraphy, who does this every episode. Thank you, Calligraphy. You're a king. So back to our one that they call let me get your name right miss jennifer so jennifer you'll see i know what you're trying to do the light like you're almost there except she's too far back she's right on the background she's on the curve like the wall comes down and then there's a curve right here and she, I can see the like she's right. And also the place where she's supposed to stand is here, this shiny part. So you have her too far back. I can tell you've never been in the studio before. So this here, this reflective part is where she's supposed to stand and like four feet off the background. This is the background. This is where you have her and she's supposed to be here. Your camera position is here. You measure off the wall four feet. And then that's where you put your marker. And then the light doesn't render a shadow like you're shooting on camera flash. And then you don't light from the front when you're trying to put you light from this direction. And then that pushes the shadow off the wall. So again, I know it's your first time in the studio. I know you're practicing, but when you're shooting a cover, you have to remember that you have to leave all this as space. Her head has to go right here. Where am I gonna put my cover if her head is there? You know what I mean? So again, I think this assignment, you failed. You get an F on this assignment, but you can do it again. And again, I know it's your first time in the studio. I know it's your first time shooting this way, but you have to use logic when it comes to like, looking at covers, looking at headspace, looking at framing, and also the proportions. Nine inches that way, 12 inches that way. Our cameras are eight inches that way, 12 inches that way. So don't mess around with proportions. I hope that helps. All right. New member. Eric, welcome to the crew. Thank you for joining us. You're really wanting me to get the fire department here, aren't you? Aren't you? Let's go, Eric. Thanks for being here. Appreciate you. Hope you guys are with me. You with me still? You too? Have been with me since the since you were in your early 40s. I appreciate you guys. Let's go. <laughs> Glad you're here. Appreciate you. All right. Miss Jennifer, I hope that helps you. I just want I yes, want to see yes. more pictures for you from you. I want to see more pictures from you. More. Like honestly. You gotta shoot it out. Okay, Donna. Simple still life. Um, shot with a rebel, um, shooting at 6.7, uh, LED continuous light and a tripod. Okay. This is Donna, Donna, Donna. Let's look at your cover, Donna. I definitely see what you're trying to do here. I like the still life angle. I definitely do. 
the more you do, the better you get. The more you do, the better you get. The more you try, the better you get. Small things that you're going to kick yourself about, but small things that are going to make your, your, your shooting of the still life killer, killer. With this particular shot, what's our feature? Our feature is this bottle, right? And in, in particularly, it's this label. So because that's our feature, what you're doing is you're shooting on two backgrounds. You're shooting on the floor as a background and on these tiles as a background. And I bet you thought that the tiles were going to be your background. But then now you're trying to also include this prop and the wine, which I understand because the wine poured from there into this glass. So I think your propping is wrong. How I would do it, I'm going to draw a cross section. So imagine, let's do it like this. We're going to just draw a little cross section. This is your table that you're shooting. This is your bottle. And this is your box. Okay, this is your wall. What you're doing is your camera is here and you are aiming down on the scenario and in you aiming down that's why you see half when you look at your shot you have half floor and half background what i need you to do is not go from this angle at all what i need you to do is back up and shoot from here oops shoot from here why are you doing that to me this is your table this is your bottle. This is your prop. You're going to hit with your sticks and you're going to hit at this angle. So now shooting that way, you're able to hit the bottle almost straight on. And what that does to your floor is it makes your floor just a sliver. So now your back, your image looks like just a slim little piece of the floor. And the bottle up here, lovely bottle, and the box here. And out, what I would do is I would turn the box upside down and then put the wine glass on the box upside down. And now your background actually is those tiles. So you're just hitting this too high. That's it. You're aiming down instead of aiming at. Try to think of your subjects as um, portraits. You wouldn't aim so hard down on them. You'd aim at them because it's also making the bottle really strange proportions and it's making your it impossible for you to have your line straight because you're aiming down on it. So you can't have your line straight. In order for those lines to be straight, you have to be hitting it straight on. I hope that helps you. This is definitely, definitely like... You're so close, Donna. Like, honestly, man, you're so close. You'd be super proud. This is a great shot. Great, great, great job. Great job. Again, you were just a little bit high. Just the touch, touch, touch high. But you know your niche. Lighting-wise, lighting-wise, LEDs, you need strobes. You need to get used to lighting with flash, especially when you're shooting products because you need that exposure. You need to be able to control light in a way that you can't with LEDs. That's why product photographers shoot strobe. Let's just look at Scott Cicino. Look at Scott Cicino and look, understand that none of this photography is done with led do you understand do you see how poppy it is do you see how crispy it is this is done with flash you need to learn how to use strobe because if not you can't get the sharpness because you can't get f22 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 you can't get that you can't get that with LED. That's why you have high ISOs. And that's why your overall, the overall look of your image is muddy. It's because you're using um, LEDs and not strobe. I hope that helps you, Donna. All right. Let's get into... By the way, guys, congratulate me. 
congratulate me because for the first time ever in three years almost my third year anniversary is a month from now doing this podcast for the first time ever I have 100 people watching me live organically without me doing anything. Oh my God, that is amazing. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Guys, if you're new, this is me. Treat everybody like a superstar. Famous people less like a superstar. I treat famous people like real people. I started as a photographer, I would say professionally, when I was 20. My brother's a fine art painter, heavily influenced on me, and I couldn't paint, so when I discovered the camera, it was really easy for me to express myself creatively. Everybody's in the business of glorifying celebrities, so capturing them, it's already glorifying them by photographing them. So if I can get them a little bit more understated, I feel like it brings up the real. In 1997, I shot Tom York from Radiohead, most important picture of my career. In 2001, I shot Pharrell Williams for Peace Magazine. Again, very important picture. Colin Firth, a week before he won his Oscar. Career moving pictures where that picture propels a whole new wave of clients, a whole new wave of people looking at my work. I think. Pivotal career changing pictures are more important than favorite pictures because they're all my favorites. The whole idea is make good stuff and share it and do it every day. This is all just in case you have no idea who you're watching and who's doing these photo reviews. That's me. I'm Cardi. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you all. All right. You want some more? You still with me? You still with me? Are you with me still? That's what I'm asking you. Are you with me? God fucking no. Dude, well, get out of here then. Go, 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 go. Leave, leave, go, yes, go, sir, go. Yes, yes. Thank you. Appreciate you. All right, by the way, guys, you'll notice lots of graphics and glitches and things happening. I give control of my stream to the people who watch me. So if you're a member and after a while, you know that there's these secret commands that you can do that actually glitch me and stuff like that. So you'll see people doing this regularly. <laughs> this is all controlled by the people who watch me. And it's something that I do that makes watching me fun and it makes getting getting the kind of information that I give you, it makes it high quality content, you know? And, and, and honestly, you can watch anybody teach you how to be a better photographer, but I, I like to think that my three decades doing this has gives me a bit of an advantage. The things that I've shot, the places that I've gone, the places that my camera's taken me. I've been a photographer since I was 14. I, I'm like a prodigy. I have an artist brother who's my biggest influence and I went to the best photography schools and I shot my first models when I was 19 and blah, blah, blah. Yes, I shot yes. my cover, my first cover when I was 25. And I'm 54, about to be 54 this year. So 53, let's not, let's not push me ahead of where I actually am. And yes, I look young because you can dress however the hell you want. The only thing you have to do is have some sort of personal style. The hard thing is, is too many photographers don't care at all about what they look like. They think the photography is enough. But for those of you who are getting into my masterclass, whoo, I'm about to shake you all up. All right, let's get into a Maria. Maria Z. Maria. All right, Maria, let's get into your photo. Maria. Maria. Maria, there's nothing that I like better than seeing new photographers. Portraits and travel is your niche. There's nothing I like more than seeing new photographers and Maria is no joke. Let's go, Maria. Maria, I don't know you and you don't know me yet, but I know this, you have talent. 
you can shoot portraits. And the people who find me are naturally the people who have talent for photography, but they're having a hard time putting it together, trying to have a hard time putting it together and figuring out how to make money. I could teach you how to make money with your camera. You can shoot, you can shoot. This is for your first submission. I am so impressed. Great body language, great light, great technical ability. And by the way, this is not a competition. What this is, is motivation. Because understand that there's photographers that are no smarter than you. They just are hungry. There's photographers that are no, ta no more talented than you, but they just understand the rules. And there are unspoken rules when it comes to magazine photography and magazine composi composition. And Maria, you understand the rules. And this is a absolute banger. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. I have nothing to say. I could say this is my photo and you'd believe me. So for that reason, excellent, excellent, excellent job. I'm very proud of you. Please keep submitting more photos on the table. Let's go. That's an absolute winner. Well done. Well done. Well done. Wow, Maria coming in with the bang, 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 bang. <laughs> Let's go. That makes me happy. I love seeing new photographers work. It's the best. All right, Dan. Self-portrait editorial cover. Oh, very, 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 very difficult, Dan. When you're trying to shoot an editorial, you're, I, I know I'm imagining that your niche is, is portraits, but when you're trying to be in it and also like in order to really direct nuance you have to be the guy behind the camera i appreciate your effort because you did really create a great a great effort and i think that this is a great effort i really do there's some technical issues as far as um what's happening in the blacks, which we'll get into in a second. Your headspace is good. I mean, yes, we could have pushed him up, pushed you up. I gotta keep remembering that this is actually you. Your eye line is just about like on, on the 50%, which is good. Um, you still, still it could have come just a little bit higher. The light is really nice. The light's really nice. Like I'm, I, I appreciate the light, but I feel like you don't have a light meter. Um, and there's some real nonsense happening in the background as far as digital noise. I don't know if that's because like, and also in your hair, when I actually really get in big, I'm starting to see, like I'm not seeing black, I'm seeing green. So the reason that I ask for these files at this size is so I can actually look at it at a pixel level and you see these little jagged um, bits of data that's happening in these areas where the image isn't blending from as it's going through the transitions. When you look at this picture, um, Oops. When you look at this picture full size, you don't see the you don't see it. Hello, full size, please. When you look at this, um, oh my goodness me, please give me this photo again. Thank you. When you look at this full size, you don't see it the same way, I think, as I'm seeing it. Um, with the, but I see that the black isn't black. Like that's, that's the thing, like right off the black, back is black, isn't black. So when I look at the black, I'm seeing that there's underexposure that's happening here. So I'm wondering if the underexposure is coming because of the fact that you're using LEDs. Let me just have a look to see what light you're using here. Um, roto lights. Um, I don't know what they are. I don't know what roto lights are. Are they continuous or are they strobes? Um, I don't know what roto lights are. I'm sorry. Um, I'm imagining that they're continuous because the way that the exposure is, I think that the exposure is um, low. And I don't know if you have a meter. Light meter is going to make a big difference. And also when the exposure, when you nail the exposure, then it's easy to make black black. 
I think in this case, if you had have made black black, then the exposure on your face, you would have lost it. And that means that it shot underexposed. And then that's also why you have this weird digital noise happening. Also, one way to help is to process in 16-bit. 16-bit, it's super key. When you process in Lightroom, you the default is likely 8-bit, but you can set it for 16-bit. And what the reason that we do that is to help with this gradient between light to dark. Like it makes those gradients happen without banding. And you are getting insane banding in this photo because 8-bit and underexposure. So if you can imagine 8-bit, you're getting like the equivalent of like 256 colors. And when you process in 16-bit, you're getting like 54, like million color. Like it's, it's the, the difference is so insane how much more color you get when you process in 16-bit. It's just the only way to do it. I hope that helps you. And also, Dan, shooting self-portraits for a cover would happen exactly zero times. So I know you were struggling for a subject. If you're struggling for a subject like again, I, I can't solve those problems, but putting yourself in as the subject now removes you as the director. You can't see and shoot. You can't get that nuance when you're trying to just stand in. It doesn't happen. Like the director rarely, oh, let me act also in this scene. You know what I mean? <coughs> I hope that helps you, my friend. I think I need a drink. Why is this camera always cut off? Jeez Louise. This camera always likes to like cut off. Sometimes she do that. Hmm. You back on now? There you go. All right. That's better. Okay, let's get into our next photographer, Josh B. One light, um, speed light, um, another self-portrait. Um, okay, okay, self-portrait. Let's look at, let me just make sure I get the names right. This is Josh Joss B. Joss, Joss, J O S S, Joss B. Okay, Joss, let's look at your image here. Thank you for submitting. Let's look at this as a cover. You definitely nailed the cover composition. You definitely nailed the exposure. Uh, you definitely have a style. You definitely are nailing this like super shallow aperture, like really sharp eyes, which is really great. Like good, good, good detail. Nose in focus, eyes in focus, mouth. And you can see the ears are way, way, way out. But this is a look. It's something that you're working on. And I appreciate that. You got to appreciate when you're going this shallow with your with your focus. We have this eye. This eye is razor. This eye is not razor. Like even the difference between this focal plane here and this focal plane back here, that distance is literally probably two millimeters, but it's out of focus. So that's when you shoot wide open that radically, like you open yourself into like some technical issues. But again, you may, you did it right where the dominant eye or the, di the eye that's closest to camera is always the eye that you have tack sharp. In this case, you have that. And also the secondary eye is in shade and out of focus. So it's okay. It's okay. I definitely see like you're doing like a vignetting to this image, which I can see. I can see that because of this hard line. This hard line here for me is a little bit extra that like whatever that line is. Um, I think that I would prefer to see it more like the way that it is on this side, which is a really a gradual gradation, which is way harder on this side if you're doing post vignette after the fact. Overall for me, this is a good shot. Overall for me, this is a good cover. But again, 
I'll remind you, it's you need to find subjects. There's subjects walking up and down the street all around you. Meet people, start making connections and start finding people to have in front of your camera because New you member. can't, um, let's go Jason, back for five months, let's go. You can't, um, you can't make a living always subbing in for where a subject should be because it ends New up member. being like, this ends up being yes in your portfolio, but not really in your portfolio. It ends up being a bio picture. So it, it's just like, yes, I shoot my own bio pictures and stuff like that too. But for new expanding member. our portfolio, we definitely need to be getting new subjects in front of us. I hope that helps. Thank you for submitting. Everybody who's rejoining, thank you. I appreciate you all. I appreciate you new for member. joining the crew. All of you who are re-upping. Did, did my smoke go? My smoke machine blow up. New member. Wow. These renewal days, it just goes cray cray. All right, let's look at another shooter. Our next photographer that we are getting into is Kyle. Kyle says it's his first submission. I appeared in his recommendations and he has been binging. All right, shot with the Sony in an 85. Um, so um, basically this is his niche and um, shot with the Sony a7 IV with a 85 millimeter. All right, let's have a look at Kyle. Kyle, good vibe here, I appreciate it. Good vibe here, let's look at this as a cover. You've already pre-cropped this to a nine by 12 proportion and you're definitely putting in some sort of a LUT or a treatment in here to give it some sort of a dreamy feeling. I definitely feel that and I see it. I want you to watch how that affects skin tone, especially when your exposure is super high. The exposure on this baby is hot. This is plus, I would say, a third of a stop up here in the head is also it's a highlight so this is more acceptable this is also plus a third the highlight in the head is a bit more acceptable than the highlight that's happening through the forehead under here and under the eyes so exposure and also in here this whole part of the dress is like a full one stop over so when you're starting to push treatments and especially when you're new into photography i always like recommend that photographers like shoot like free of the hooks that luts and presets and like heavily posty work does because i'll tell you if you look at a list of like my top photographers, the most inspirational photographers, the photographers that are at the top of the top of the top of the top that are working, like that are household names. When you, and it doesn't matter what genre that they're shooting in, even including and especially baby photography. And I'm gonna show you CBR, um, my friend Chelsea. Um, Chelsea is a photographer and she, she's managed to like create this feeling without going too too far with her LUTs and her looks like let's just look a little bit at lifestyle and Chelsea's like a super successful photographer like you can see the new the new new is shooting like real like that's that's the the new is is this feeling without heavy post-production like i think when lightroom first came in it was all like let's see how hard we can put treatments on our photography but now a days it, it's not like that anymore and in fact there's such a pushback on it that if you look at the biggest most successful commercial photography you'll always see skin looks like skin there's no it almost doesn't even look like there's retouching at all there's no treatments in post there's no luts there's no looks it's just photography like that that is what is right now so 
if you're trying to build a career, build it without crutches. Make it so the work is amazing without any treatment on top of it because treatment is just a hook. It's just a hook. So I hope that angle helps by showing you you sigh. Let's get back into your image, which unfortunately it looks like I closed accidentally. When I see this picture, I see the treatment, unfortunately, before I see the image. And the reason is because we all know what a sky looks like. A sky doesn't have this cast. So when you aim into the sky, the sky should be white. So it's just because of that. I think that the cast is a little bit much. I would love to see this picture without so much post because the post is affecting the exposure. The, the exposure is affecting me actually seeing the photo. And um, the things that you have going for you is your angle being nice and low, having this really great depth of field vibe going in front and behind. But for me, the picture somehow has to like end here. And that's tricky with your position. You have to position yourself that raises this um, horizon line of the, um, the foliage to about here. And then the background is just all foliage and you've cut out that white bar of like this, everything that's sort of above this line is unnecessary. And although yes, it works as a cover, um, still, I feel like you could get even more impact with a little bit of that green texture. I would love to see some of your work without the treatment, honestly. Please submit more. Submit again. That was Kyle. This is 8-Bit Beard. First submission. No niche, just a hobbyist. Tried to make an editorial, editorial product photography style photo. All right. Let's see 8-Bit Beard. The hobbyist. 8-bit beard. This is a pretty good effort for being a hobbyist. I definitely see what you're doing here. I like I like the vibe. I mean, it's a lifestyle picture. It's kind of a hybrid between a magazine cover and a lifestyle picture. I definitely see the stuff that you're doing in post technically. Right off the bat, I saw the hand and that there was some sort of clean up or things that's happening right next to the hand and in here and over here and also around the stuff that you're dropping so when it comes to backgrounds i think that you need to pull off the background considerably i think that this piece of muslin is too close because in order to get this right, we have this super sharp, we have this super sharp, but you can see your glass here is out of focus. And it's out of focus because of your depth of field, right? Because in order to shoot this, you need like an F16 and you also need strobe, like studio lights. When you're doing this with just um, existing light, or I mean, this is probably LED, it means that it's really hard to freeze action and really hard to get the kind of f stops that you need my suggestion also with this would be to just use a black background this back here black now our eye isn't going to the blue at all it becomes an invisible background and now your eye can really focus on what the product is also this hand is too high i would have this hand ending like around here so it's a little bit it makes a little bit more sense for him to be trying to drop into this and also the hand isn't lined up with going into this the hand looks like it would actually be dropping stuff here so we kind of got to line the hand up as well small things but again the fact that you're going through these exercises is really good it's good for the brain and it keeps us like it keeps us sharp and also Doing these exercises, it's like you're trying to solve a puzzle. When I do it like this, you can see how much more it makes sense for the hand to be reaching in a little bit more. And also this photo without the hand also stands alone, you know? So again, it's a great shot. I'd love to see you experiment a little bit more with lighting and a little bit more with building these still life sets. You'll see like once you go to Behance and see how crazy these still lifes can get, It'll inspire you to be a little bit more focused, a little bit less distracting with the table and the items that you have around and you'll have some fun with it. Good job. Good job. 8-Bit Beard. 
All right. <clears throat> Thank you for submitting, 8-Bit Beard. All right. Who's next? Hard drive recording. First submission. First time I ever set up time to set up for a magazine shoot. I used what I, I made use of what I have. Um, okay, so food. First time. Let's have a look. This is hard drive recording. Let us have a look. As a first effort, I think it's good. I think it's good as a first effort when you're using existing things the thing that the thing that you did do is you did it smart meaning you made food and you made food well it looks nice I mean it looks nice you got fresh berries you, like like it's it's styled well I think the one thing that I could lose is this fruit basket in the background I think that I think that it takes away from what we're doing. I also see the tray at an angle. I would definitely put the tray this way and shoot it definitely 100% straight on. And then you have your items across this way. <clears throat> Overall, you should be really happy with this because compositionally, you really nailed the concept of what a cover is. You really nailed the concept of what cover composition is. And yes, you already have made your own critiques as to what you could have done better. The food styling, funny enough, I think the food styling is pretty good. I just think the photography side of it and the angle, the way that you hit this product could have been horizontal because shooting it horizontally now gives you space to drop text elements with it. The black background, really good. The top light, really good exposure could have been up like a third exposure plus a third i mean if you look in here if you see how that white is starting to feel a little bit muddy just a little bit more exposure and the entire fruit basket out like not even there so you don't have colored things that you're jumping around now you can just focus on because there's plenty of fruit in this scene. The fruit bowl, the pancakes, the fruit on top, and the fruit on the tray. I think you have all the elements here. I want you to shoot more food. I actually think that you like shooting food, and I think that there could be something here, considering with no experience, this is how far you got with your first attempt. Let's go. Let's go. With your first attempt, this is really excellent, really good, and I'm proud of you for pushing yourself into unknown territory and trying to do something that's actually hard because it's not easy to do these kinds of assignments that I'm asking you to do, but there's a reason, there's a method to my madness. I'm teaching you how to do an assignment, do an assignment on time and to execute it to all the specifications because that's professional photography. That's what you'll be doing like literally as your job. All right. Let's get into our next shot. Anna, Anna. This week, my model is a beauty from France. <laughs> so good. Sometimes the simple things can be quite elegant. It uh, can be quite challenging. Um, shot with 105 millimeter. Um, shot at F36. Are you hearing me? F36 at a quarter of a second. This is Anna. Anna is a member from my mentorship program. Anna, let's go. Anna, Anna, Anna. Well, I think Anna has another calling. This is so well executed. The light, you've figured out how to use reflectors. You've figured out how to use bounce cards and how to light the card and let the card's reflection kick light in look at these subtle gradients no hard harsh spots on the bottle anna this is pro level product photography pro level your exposure is a touch low the exposure in here needs to be up like a touch and your black would still remain black um i see a couple of like glitches in the black background but the fact that you pulled this out and you did it in the short amount of time that I gave you to do this assignment, I'm so absolutely proud of you. Absolutely. This, this again becomes, if you shot just wine, 
just wine, like spirits, like food and beverage. I mean, you're such a good people photographer. You're one that's too good at too many niches. So trying to reel you in has been a difficult thing, but you killed it for me here. This is so, 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 so good. I should be very happy with that execution. So great. Anna, mentorship program. Well, <laughs> it's not me, it's you, Anna. Honestly, I just tell you what to do. Our next shooter, Unscratched. I haven't really found my niche per se, but it'll in involve the outdoors, um, incorporating photography and video, both aerial and land-based. This is Unscratched. Unscratched cover submission. Let's have a look at Unscratched. Well done, Unscratched. Let's have a look at this. I like it. I like the light. I like the lines. And as, I mean, it's tricky because you're shooting dappled light. You're shooting dappled light, meaning mixed light. It's, it's lit and not lit, which brings in contrast, which brings in like shadow details that now overpower kind of what's happening in the shot compositionally strong like leading line through the photograph interesting elements through the photograph with these crazy um fungus mushrooms that you're sharing but the mixed light is what creates now this extra layer of shadows on top of everything which actually for me is kind of taking away it's taking away from like if you shot this when the sun went behind the cloud now suddenly instantly punchy photo because it has the texture but for this it has texture and it has mixed lights. So that now starts to make it a bit busy. Um, I know you're a very capable photographer Unscratched. I know you have mad talent. I think this picture is just, it's just a bit busy. And again, when you're shooting a cover, is this scene, although it's composed as a cover, it's composed like you could use it as a cover. You can see how because it's so busy underneath, it becomes really difficult to put text on top of the mixed light. What color would it be? What color could I put text? And where can I put text here that doesn't interfere with something that's happening in the photograph? Which is why a majority of covers are very non-distracting, very solid backgrounds, because they all have to work with text. So for that reason, that's almost like a triple reason why the mixed light and the extra texture in this context is like a little bit extra. I've seen your photography on Scratch. You've won photography of the year. You've won, um, you've won photo of the week. Like I, I, I know your photography. I know what you're capable of. I think this one's a bit of a miss just because of the busyness, but still like I see what you're doing. Um, I just want you to think a little bit more edit like Storytelling is what you have to be thinking about <clears throat> if you're shooting places and outdoors. You have to somehow take a stand in some way and tell some sort of editorial story. And I think we kind of missed you taking that stand in this photo. I hope that helps my friend. All right, let's look at another shooter. This is Matthew Sargent. Um, so Matthew has photographed his wife for the first time ever and um in outside in the snow and cold matthew Sargent shooting a cover submission let's go matthew well done let's have a look at this as a cover i definitely see i definitely see what you're doing i appreciate the background it has like it has a really like it has a feeling i feel like the posing with her, I feel like it was cold. So she just went out and you just grabbed something like as fast as you could. I'm wondering if you have any of her facing the camera because I think her squared up. You hear how often I talk about squaring up your subjects. You'll notice if you do a search and you type magazine covers. This is again, I gave you no instructions because everybody has the ability to do this. 
when you do this search and look at magazine covers, you'll see 90% of them are straight on. And it's rare when they're not. But most of them, most of them have this very dead on approach when it comes to how we reveal a person. It has to be very like front and center and it's only when people get like that celebrity status do you they start shooting like that over the arm kind of vibe only when they're like professional models are you getting that like over the shoulder kind of vibe most of the time it's straight on like look at this picture of lizzo it's straight on most of the time when we're shooting it's straight on. I'm definitely skipping this because Epidemic puts it in every single time and uh, it's got to end. So that's something that I want you to think of when it comes to shooting people side on. It's very rare and it's usually always a very, very known celebrity that they shoot that way. Most of the time, it's straight on. So I want you to work on straight on when it comes to how you're shooting your your photographs i love the vibe i love the black and white in this particular thing because she's wearing black and white and the dark dark hair the eyes are great the focus is killer killer sharp i just think that her squared away now you're going to see the masthead space just a little bit better and you can see that you're right up at that like above that eye line as to where I can drop the masthead. It's small things, but always remember when you're in front of a subject, present them like you would be having a conversation with them. And that's rarely shoulder front. You know, it's not them looking back at you. I know it seems cool for a pose, but when you're learning the fundamentals of body language, start like super rudimentary, really straight up, because that is actually a format, a format of how we shoot. And you'll notice, if you even look at my photography, how much you see photographs um, straight on. Like, look, look at what you see repeat over and over and over again is the way that I shoot people relatively straight on it's just you know it's rare that i shoot them any other way all right matt i hope that helps you again it's technically your technicals are at uh, an 11 out of 10. exposure is just a touch low which makes it just a touch muddy the exposure can go up like i would say a third third overall this entire picture but technically 10 out of 10 um even an 11 because your technical is actually it's getting better exposure just a little bit up and square up your subjects have your people look dead at you so you can really just see the face straight on and it also controls all these weird things that happen with the neck when you're looking sideways and stuff so i hope that helps you mr matthew Sargent. great job my guy thank you for being here and being a part of the crew matt is one of my mods on the discord incredibly helpful all right so Alice has continued her self-directed project, which her self-directed project is her in frame. It's the self-portraits. Let's have a look at Alice. Okay, clever. I, I, again, this is a photo that you have to look at a little bit. You have to look at for a second in order for it to register. The thing that you're gonna notice, hopefully that you notice before I reveal is the reflection in the mirror is not the reflection that's happening here. <clears throat> which is pretty cool. So this is too, like, conceptually, this is an excellent conceptual picture, Alice. It's really good. For a cover, we have some, we have some issues. First thing is how close you are to your edge. Like you're already cutting off your jacket here on that edge. So that, <clears throat> I understand that you're trying to also balance I understand you're also trying to balance the frame, the mirror, I mean. But it gets tricky because 
you're so close to this edge, which means it's going to get cut off here. It's also pretty busy. And because of this sign, because of this text, because of this sign down here and all these things, the same thing happens when it comes to where do I put my text? I have a small area here, but I can't put anything over here because it's going to block the such an important person part of the picture and i can't put stuff on top of here and even my masthead is has words behind it so it ends up making it look overall busy the exposure on you here is under by about half half a stop we're starting to really lose detail in here we're not getting any separation beside between the inside of the jacket and where your sweater ends, it's really starting to lose it there. You only see it when we're zoom zoomed in. And the exposure on the face definitely could be just up. I don't think it needs to be half. I would say plus a third would be good. And also when you're shooting covers, it's just about trying to make this as, as least busy as possible. If it was the mirror and you and just trees in the background, now I can put text over top of the trees and the trees still make sense and the text makes sense. This one's just a little busy, Alice, but it's a great shot for your series. I feel like it works a little bit less as a great shot for a cover. I hope that helps you. I want to see more, though. I just want you to think about less distracting backgrounds. I think that there's too many elements in this picture. And I also think that um, I also think that the cut arm is like it's really bothersome. All right, guys. You see how I go? You see how I do? Thank God I have sponsors. Holy. This podcast is brought to you by Cardi Crew Merch. Every piece you see, designed by the photographer you're currently watching. And let me let you in on a little secret. Meticulously hand-stitched by the arthritic grandmothers of our very own viewers. Well, uh, what? This creative community inspired this entire line. Your zeal okay, for artistry, your tireless dedication, and your individuality shines in every stitch and design. This isn't just another piece of clothing, it's a badge of honor for every creator out there. From what I see here, they are mostly just black t-shirts and hoodies, but you do you boo. You actually want me to read the rest of the script? Oh my god, who is this guy? From the nuanced patterns to the vibrant colors, everything has been designed keeping in mind the creative soul that lies within each one of us. Wow. Who wrote that? There isn't a single pattern, not one. Oh my God, leave the There's commentary. There's hardly any nuance. But it says oh here, God, this merch this represents more than just apparel. It's an emblem of our shared passion for creativity. Who wrote this? What absolute twaddle. Wow, this guy is a great supporter. All of this stuff is kind of basic to be honest, but I'll keep that to myself. Okay. <sighs> Let the world know you're a part of something bigger. A photographer on YouTube's clothing collection that he actually has the balls to make a commercial about. Okay, what Sorry, is going what on? what I meant to say is, a collective of photographers that celebrates and uplifts every form of creativity. I am aware, as the narrator, I'm not allowed to insert my own narrative. But, holy moly, this is horrible. Wow. Join the movement, embrace your creative spirit with Cardi Crew merch. And yes, he is really calling this a movement. Be proud of your passion for photography. Be proud of your creative life. If photography is your life, flaunt it. The one paying for this advertisement has asked me to make a toast. Isn't this a podcast? Okay, it'll cost you another 20. Let's raise a toast to every photographer, artist, and creative out there. Thanks for being a part of this journey. This guy's so Did patronizing. That, suit you? that was absolutely ridiculous. Please don't make me read anything like that again. Back to the show. Ah, uh, it's almost like I'm losing my voice. You, you don't understand. Like, <laughs> but we go on. We do this. I do this for you. I, I get such joy in seeing the work. I get such joy in seeing the progression. So we rock on. I just need to take a sec every once in a while, have a drink, make it so I still can, I can still have a voice. All right, Alice, I hope that helped you. A little bit less distracting backgrounds, but I'm so on it for this project. I'm very excited. I want you to note that like Alice at any one time has many different self-directed projects going on and it's personal work. She does it for herself. It expands her creativity and it makes her her day to day photography work sing. It's great. Alice has successfully become a full time photographer. 
All right, guys, this is Tony. Um, Tony is delivering us a magazine cover. <laughs> this is Tony's line. I would like to share with you my contribution to the January travel issue of our renowned Behind the Picture magazine. The travel issue. Tony, guys, very, very, very great, great shot. The travel issue. Tony, you are a very good photographer. This, you hit every nail on the head you've won photo of the year in an editorial category and you're proving to not just me i hope you're proving to yourself that you are a magazine photographer i'm going to help you develop your portfolio because i think portfolio development and learning what pictures to show how, why you need to show certain pictures why you don't show other pictures that's something that every photographer needs development with and your portfolio is never finished. Your travel photography, your editorial style, your editorial portraits, your sensibility, your swagger, you, like you just have it, you have it. I, I wanna help you get that it into the place where you have that turned into money and you're this far away. This is your year, Tony, without question. Congratulations, what an absolute banger of a travel photo. You nailed it, nailed it. Great, great, great job. Wowzer. Okay, um, Freddie, Freddie. Freddie says, this week I had a vision uh, for a cover of an outdoor travel magazine. I hesitated to think, should I submit in black and white or color? I don't know if outdoor magazines do black and white covers. Shot on the R6 Mark II. All right, Freddy. Magazine cover for a travel magazine. I love it. Love it, 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 love it. Like, number one, the person from behind makes this image not just for an episode or an issue of Cardi's Outdoor Magazine, but it makes this a stock image. And because it's shot in such a way that you have the color version, this image will sell. This image will sell. It actually proves to me that you know how to not just shoot a cover, but you can shoot stock photography. Meaning I tell you an assignment to shoot and you execute the assignment. A stock editor is gonna tell you the same thing. This is a great execution. I love the silhouette. Even if you made the silhouette even a little bit more by um, post-production, it's done clean, it's done well, I don't notice it. This is a great, great, great capture. And you nailed it, perfect, 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 perfect. Watch how he dropped the horizon line low. You hear me talk so often about when you shoot people against the sky to push that horizon line low. Make that horizon line like this so the person can be up against the sky. And you you listened and you executed it and you nailed it. Perfect, 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 perfect job. Great job. Good shit. It's great when I say things that and, and and people come to the understanding and then they take that understanding and they give that back to me in new work. Again, I'm not doing this for me. I'm already working. I literally, I'm just trying to, to show you the, like, there's a path. It's like, how do you become a photographer? It's like, okay, well, you got to go three times. It's like a combination lock. You know what I mean? It's like, how do people do Rubik's cubes? Like literally, how do people do Rubik's cubes? Here, done. It's like a photography business is like that. It's like that. So when you're, when you, when you can't fathom it, and I was like that for most of my life, I could do like one side, maybe two sides I had going, but business side, mindset, outward reach, all this other stuff, I had no idea. So I'm trying to teach you how to uh, solve a Rubik's Cube. <laughs> Times taken, first submission.
I love shooting everything, but I'm going to focus on headshots and portraits. R585. Let's go. Time's taken. I like you already. I don't even know who you are. Time's taken, but I like you already. Well done. I like you already. What I love is the nostalgic feeling. I love that, like, it was shot in the 30s kind of a feeling. It's to period, and it's, it's even the pose is to period. Like, the pose is cheesy, but the pose works because it's to period. You know what I mean? If you look at old photographs by Cecil Beaton, like old photographs by Gordon Parks, like this is it. The exposure is a little low, but it's so close. It's so close. It's down by like, I would say it's under by like a quarter, which makes the overall feeling just a little bit gray. It feels just a little bit gray. And her skin could pop just a little bit more. And also you're doing some, some fuckery in post-production that I got to teach you how to do, how to fix. There's like, um, I think that you're lowering clarity and you're lowering texture, which has, it makes it f have this antique kind of feeling. And I think that you're going a little bit too far. I want you to learn how to retouch properly. Like once you learn how to retouch properly, you don't have to mess around with clarity or texture. You can just leave it naturally where it is, which will make your photos not feel hazy. Um, I love it though. I think it's a really cool shot. As far as the attempt, as far as the light, as far as the pose, the fact that she's really leaning into camera, this is a photo from 1945. You know what I mean? It, it is like, and and, it, and it's cool that I'm saying that. That's not by any means a diss. It's it's like a period piece and very cool. I'd like to help you with your post production. I'd like to help you with what you do in post, so we don't have that appearance of bleed, because the black feels like it's bleeding down here, and you see that, right? The black feels like it's bleeding. That has to do with what you're doing in post. So I want you to look at this picture. I want you to take it right back to raw. And this is a photo for one of my episodes. If you would submit the raw, sub raw file to my raw submission folder, this might be one of the photos that I process live on the air to show you what I would do with your photo. I hope that helps my friend. It's definitely a good picture and technically, technically good. Your sharpness is good. Your focus is good. The expression on her, it's believable. Like you're so close. You're so close. You're just butchering it in post-production. So let me help you fix that. Good, good, good job. Good attempt. All right. Our next photographer, Black Phoenix. Um, so blah, 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 blah. this is a self-portrait called Hidden Femininity. So um, let's have a look at Black Phoenix. Shooting a self-portrait, and again, I I know that many of you are having great difficulties finding subjects. As for the photo, as for the photo, the photo speaks to me. The photo speaks to me. There's a couple of small mistakes, but look at the black, white, and gray. Look at how, look at how perfectly you executed the background. The black is really well done. There is like a little bit of streaking that's happening in here from one of your lights and up here. The hands, I'm not sure now what you're doing to, with post-production, but this is where once we start going in tight and I start looking at the hands and her skin and like, it looks like you're blurring everything. It looks almost like painter, painterly and not in a good way, Black Phoenix. It almost looks like you're painting too much. You're doing too much to make it feel like, um, hello, can you give me back this picture at the right size? Thank you. Yeah, it's too much. You're painting over your tattoo completely here where we can see like, Skin retouching, you can't do it the way that you're doing it. When we zoom in on a photo, it's not allowed to fall apart like that. Because again, the concept, the con like the idea, it's so close. It's there. It's just 
I mean, again, self-portrait because you didn't have a subject, but technically how far you're improving and how, how fast you're improving is, is notable. And I want you to note that I notice it. How close you are to the edge here, you hear me saying often, because you're shooting a self-portrait, you can't see that you're not exactly centered. Your head is centered, kinda, but this distance and this distance isn't the same, but because you're shooting yourself and you're looking down, you can't see that. So again, it's why we need to find subjects to shoot. And I'm definitely gonna talk about ways that I find subjects to shoot. What you're doing in post, we need to stop today today i would rather you do nothing do you read nothing do nothing in post and just share me your files than do bad post and make me have to make fun of you cool beans that is our one called black phoenix the shot's there i think you just killed it in post show me that shot again without the post please i'd love to see it without the post that is black phoenix all right, let's see our next shooter. Our next shooter is Ken Collier. Tried to keep it simple. Um, shot on the D3500 ISO 800 at a quarter of a second. Ken Collier. Ken tried to keep it simple. All right, let's have this as a cover. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I feel like you're just a touch close. I feel like you're just a touch close and the reason is because of what i said earlier just how close this ends up cutting this ends up cutting a little bit close and also this is sort of like the eye line of this guitar so you're kind of wanting to have this just a little bit lower but compositionally this works as an 8 by as an 8 by 12 also realize that when this becomes an 8 by 10 you lose two inches and you can't afford two inches from the top. So those two inches, this is one inch here. This is a second inch there. So it ends up being like you lose that much of the photo. So you're already cutting off that name, which is another thing, meaning you're too close. You have to, you can't be so claustrophobic in on items without knowing what your proportions are going to be. It's just a touch, touch, touch close. Again, there's small things that you can do with post-production. I don't know what your level of experience is with retouching, but zoom in this close. If you've ever watched any of my work sessions or watched me retouching files, you'll see I go in this close and clean up all the, like this becomes a product shot. Therefore, try your best to make the product look absolutely as good as possible which means going in i would take out this wire and um just clean up all these little bits of dust and all the like the water i mean i know you wiped it but still there's like spots all over it contrast and contrast is good here like we do have a nice blend of like white black gray we could definitely bump the exposure up probably a third just to give me just a touch of separation up here because we are losing the top of that because of exposure. And also just put a reflector back here and wherever your light source is coming, it's gonna kick back and give you a little bit of that rim up there. I hope that helps you, Ken Collier. All right, let's see another. Gimme, 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 gimme. Gimme another photographer, Sebastian K. Editorial cover. Editorial cover, Sebastian. Let's go, Sebastian Kawaka. This is a good cover. It works, it works compositionally. It definitely works compositionally. Let me fix, you've pre-cropped this. Obviously the masthead color would not be pink. It's cropped great, the eyeline's great. She's a bit up on the wall. You kind of have her in that in-between position where she's like a foot away from the wall. She's not against the wall, but it looks like she's against the wall because the distance that you have her from the wall is not far enough. I would love you to pull her off the wall far enough until you start to see the ground 
and then use that as your cut point and lower yourself because then you can really get that separation because right now, although this is a textured background, our eye is still sort of dancing around like actually the texture of the brick. And I want you to remember that we still have to put text over top of this brick. And what color would it be? It starts to be like, Okay, now if we pull her away, we'll still know it's a brick wall, but it'll be just out of focus enough in order for us to be able to um, to grab what it is that the text says and also still see the photo. As far as the light, the light on her is great. The focus is great. Um, you said you mentioned something about her fixing her hair, of course, like you have to have her pull her hair out of her scarf, let her blah, 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 do a like all of that and then shoot it and let the hair like kind of do what it does i think that i would love to see if this picture with her hair was like blowing one way or even blowing over her face would also have been amazing also i would love to see this girl without glasses like she's got a great face like why not? like show me without glasses just you know i know i wear glasses and um I don't ever let people see me wearing them. You know, I wear, I wear contact lenses, but um, but yeah, I'd love to see her also without glasses. This is a really good attempt. And again, I'm trying to train you to be a magazine photographer, Sebastian. Each time you shoot something, I'm giving you one more thing to think about. Make sure you're pulling them off the background and watch that the, the base of where the ground is. The ground will keep coming higher and higher up as you move back, stop, when the ground is like where you want your picture to be and then shoot straight on that way and cut out the ground. And that's your depth of field. I hope that helps my friend. All right, that is Sebastian Kawaka. Good job, Sebastian. All right, who's next? Gimme, 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 gimme. This is a new photographer. Photographer from India. Um, we're going to call you Shailin. Shailin. First submission. Trying to find my niche. Often finding yourself in the valley of despair. Um, so you saw your wife at her workstation. So you tried to shoot real people doing real things. Shot in the R6. All right. This is Shailin. Let's have a look at Shailin's first submission. Shailin, thanks for finding me, by the way. And thank you for submitting. Lifestyle photo. Regular person doing regular thing. Let me fix my masthead. I really like the composition and the fact that you have your wife framed under the stairs this way is really kind of cool. Unfortunate thing is whenever most of us are trying to shoot in our house, there's just too many busy eye lines. There's too many distractions. Off the top, the exposure on her face is low because there's no light coming this way hitting her face. So the exposure on her face is, I would say, under by about two thirds of a stop, which is quite a lot. Because when you aim in here, your camera sees the brightness that's coming from here. And because it sees that brightness, that dominates and it gives you a low exposure here. So that's actually the reason that that's happening is it's kind of backlit. When you do these pictures, you take a frame, then you check your frame and then you use exposure compensation. In this case, I would have pushed it like you have your exposure compensation. It looks like this. This is zero. And then there's click, click, one, click, click, two, click, click, one, click, click, two. This is the plus direction. This is the minus direction. With this, each one of these clicks is a third and then that's on the stop. You're wanting this one to be two thirds over. Secret time, over time when you shoot, you realize that most of the time when you shoot, your camera is set a little bit on station plus side. I'm always plus a third or plus two thirds when I shoot anything. I rarely shoot at normal. It's like where I start. I shoot my first frame at normal and then I move. And again, I'm talking about when I'm doing this kind of stuff. I don't use a light meter. I use a light meter when I'm in the studio. I hope this helps. This is, um, and again, secondly is the distractions. The distractions. There's too many 
um this white thing back here this all the the, the wire coming down like it it becomes like our eye is fighting around with all of these things more so than we're actually seeing the photo so it's tricky when you're shooting lifestyle the space has to be perfect and rarely is that our space again it's like which is why with here you get to see i mean yes i i mean my spot's not you know it's relatively like i can you can be here it's relatively like but i got stuff over there you know in that corner that i don't want you to see i got a sweater i took off yesterday thrown over there that i don't want you to see and it's like so eyeline it's all about like what's in the shot and trying to make it so it's not distracting i hope that helps you thank you all the way from india shailen story by the way to inspire you one of my viewers he started watching me when he was 19 19 his name is devanshu damali devanshu damli yes dot com um and i'm going to show you this young photographer who first found corey vanderplu he first found my assistant and then he found me and i have been mentoring devanshu he lives in india he is incredible okay <laughs> this is devanshu and by the way he is 22 years old many of these photographs he was making when he was 19. he is one of the most talented young photographers that i've come across and he's gone to australia gone to photography school now he's back in india shooting this is where you could be where you are means nothing it's all about who you're looking at for inspiration this is a photographer from india that looks to new york and looks to toronto canada with me for inspiration and this is his work so devanshu this is be happy that devanshu did not submit this year to photo of the year awards because he is known for dominating categories dominates <laughs> devanshu all the way from india so um people watch me from all over the world i hope that helps you shailen and i hope that inspires you um to push as hard as you can with your pictures doesn't matter where you are let's look at romeo 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 leveled up romeo i see you i see you let's go romeo let's go this makes me so happy romeo let's go exactly what i asked for like Romeo, I'm talking directly to you. A God-fearing, God-loving blessing. A blessing to me and a blessing to this community. Romeo, I see you. And the light and the optimism, the vibe, the body language, the pose, the composition, the non-distracting background, you are leveling up. And I see you. Your light your light is very competent it's very it's like it's it's good i'm gonna help you make your light insane and and you're just you're brand new you're brand new you're brand new but this proves to you romeo this proves to you that when i believe in you and you do the stuff that i say this shows you that you could shoot for magazines i you just proved it right here i'm so absolutely proud of you Romeo let's go what do I say everything everything every single thing that I've been saying every single thing about focus everything about exposure everything about vibe everything about mood everything about styling you put it together for this photo like Romeo I'm so proud of you man you absolutely killed it let's go well done Romeo Whew. telling you man like if like I'll, i will cry if i actually talk about the dms that i get from you people the dms that i get from you and the life-changing stories that i get like uh, 
It's why I do this. It's why I, I don't care that I've been doing this for two hours tonight. And again, I, I honestly, I don't give a fuck. I, I do this because who else is? There's nobody else doing this. There's nobody who cares on YouTube. They're just me, 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 me. Look what I'm doing. And it's like... Gifted member. Vicky, thank you so much for gifting that member. I, sh I appreciate I appreciate you. Honestly, like, nobody. Nobody's doing it. The people with the biggest 5.9 million subscribers on YouTube. You ever see them do a live stream? Talk to the people who bought your Jeeps and your trucks and your, like, buildings, your viewers, the people who've paid and funded you to, like, be able to have a pirate ship? Have you ever talked to them? Like, what? <laughs> wow. For me, that's all I care about. That's all I want to do is talk to you. That's all I want to do. Honestly, that's all I care about is talking to every single person who watches me. Join my Discord, please. I have 800 people just like you who are the nicest, most helpful, most amazing people you've ever seen in your life. And I'm gathering them. I'm gathering them. I'm gathering them one at a time. Let's go. And I'm going to teach you all. We're all going to be professionals together. We're all going to rise up together. I'm telling you, or you can just watch me <laughs> just like you're doing it, which I hope helps. But that's just like this much of it. You got to join my mailing list, you master class, mentor, like, telling you man i have three business coaches three creative coach business coach marketing coach I'm telling you man anyways romeo proud of you oh, slippy hollow so slippy hollow submitted a street portrait um this I like though, Slippy. And again, Slippy, you're a talented photographer and I have very high expectations and high hopes for you. This is a great photo, a great photo. There's something to be said for that perfect light at that perfect time of day. You, you pre-cropped this for me already to nine by 12, thank you. Um, again, not necessary. I like this, I like this. And it does work as a lifestyle slash cover slash editorial photo. Now, because this is a street picture, this girl knows that you're taking this photo. Like she knows that you're taking this photo, but I'm dying for eye contact. Like this girl, she's so cute. You know, she's got beautiful eyes. You know, if this girl looks at camera, she's got a logo on her hat. So now she squares up, she looks at camera, you square up that logo and also punch in just a bit in order to cut out the left and the right side. So you're cutting out this here and you're cutting out this and you're basically keeping just that patch of green as the background with her squared up to you what like again i know it's a street portrait slippy but you're so close you're so close there this exposure here is under by like 20 uh, percent so i would want to bump this up by like call it point like 25 percent you know a couple ticks that way on the processing but overall man great 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 shot you're a good photographer i know that you're very capable and i'm pushing you i'm pushing you outside your comfort zone i'm challenging you every week and i'm making you have to deliver on demand creativity and it's training you how to learn how to work under the pressure that comes from being a working full-time photographer to by the way i'm doing this podcast right now tomorrow i'm shooting a full afternoon in studio lights blah 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 and it's like maybe i'll live stream who knows sometimes i live stream my um my studio shoots for my members so you can actually see me working so it's not always just me here at my desk sometimes i let you into the studio but again and it's like <sighs> i also do these 15 minute calls to help photographers see if i'm the right one to maybe mentor them or whatever like i just let people book a zoom chat with me to talk about anything but they're getting to the point where they're out of control people are like ah can you help me find my niche and like look through my portfolio and blah 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 i'm like bitch in 15 minutes are you crazy 
<laughs> I can't do that in 15 minutes. Um, but we can definitely talk. I can help you a little bit, but yeah. Okay, next photographer, Joshua Hone. Joshua, Joshua. This guy, this guy, Joshua. Shooting magazine covers. Joshua won photo of the year in the conceptual category. This photo is almost everything. Almost everything. Like, it's so good, but I'm, I'm frustrated because it's too close here clipping wise. It's too close here. It feels offset. Um, there's too much space there. We need like the, the where you drop the horizon line. Perfect. This sky. Perfect. This outfit, these pants, this girl, the pose like you're so good on so many of these aspects, but you have to move her over. And I know you have the shot. You're not going to go to a scene like this and shoot one frame. I know you have shots where she's more centered. I would love to see that because like, this is everything. This is like the potential to be a 12 out of 10, the potential to sell these products, the potential to be a magazine cover. Like it's, it's, it's winter, it's snow, it's authentic. It's amazing. And it's well exposed, well lit. Everything is always working for you, but the composition is just too offset for this to offset again close joshua i just show me now show me other edits i know that you have other edits show me other edits and also you are too good to not be making a living at, with your camera you're actually too good to not be making a living at your camera i know you can't take my master class this weekend because of a scheduling conflict but you need to just like literally sign up so you can watch it afterwards because the things that I'm going to go into uh, we're talking about the one person creator and like the one person business model and how I'm going to teach you guys how to wear seven hats and just dominate Joshua a great 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 shot man I just I'm so upset about the composition I'm so upset about the fact that it feels unbalanced and you know that it feels unbalanced now that I'm pointing it out to you I know that you're doing that to leave room for copy but that never happens that offset a little offset um but yours is like on a quarter of the frame a third or just a little bit off center is okay but most of the time it's quite centered and quite balanced and the text works around that. I want you to be thinking, don't you compensate for the text? Let the, let the text compensate for your amazing loose composition. I hope that helps. All right, let's get into our next shooter. We are looking at Jessica Jean. Promo shots for a local musician. She had 10 minutes. Um, and it was a shit show. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> this is Jessica submitting her cover. Well done, Jessica. Jessica, I, I, I have high expectations of you because you've shown me the level of work that you can do. Because you've shown me the level of work that you can do, I, I constantly am going to nudge you harder and harder and harder into harder areas. Technically, this is a fantastic photo. It, it's, it's actually incredibly balanced. It's lit well, it's exposed well, and your subject is off the wall. So because they're off the background, everything behind falls off. This poster back here, which normally the text up here in this poster would be hella distracting, but it's not. There is a white thing coming directly out of his head, but because it's lower and behind him in exposure, all we see is him. There's two bongo drums down here. There's fucking milk crates behind him. There's like a guitar here. Like again, should be distracting elements, but you don't see them. You see them when you look longer. But what you see when you first look is this head angle, this, the furrow on his brow, which is hella believable, really believable. The way that his body language, he's kind of adjusting his pants, hella believable. What he's wearing, totally, he looks like a record producer. And also the organ 
and the keyboard and the way that you have them at a V, like pointing at him, just makes this photo work. It's so good. You should be thrilled with this photo. I am going to turn you into a high demand magazine photographer, Jessica. You have to believe it. I'm trying to hold your niche tight to people. You're a natural people person. You're a natural people photographer. I'm trying to make you undeniable. I'm trying to make you a sure thing. That's Jessica. Guys, you can see the level of photographers that watch me. These people aren't brand new. These people are like, are in it and really trying to do it and haven't yet figured out the formula for actually making money yet or making the kind of money that makes it so they don't have to also waitress they don't have to also have a day job they don't have to also be a slashy like they don't have to like i'm a waitress slash photographer <laughs> you know what i mean you can just be a photographer <laughs> all right toby um first post let's go um model shot with a nikon iso 185 millimeter all right Toby. Let's have a look at Toby's first submission. Toby's got some sensibilities. I like your sensibility. You have like, um, like it's like a, almost like a painterly quality to your photography. And funny enough, like I hate faces. I hate this song more than anything. Please make me take this out of my playlist immediately. Um, I really never will let someone touch their face, but you don't have her touching her face. She's actually touching her collar and her chin. It's just ever so delicate. Like, there's such nuance in this photograph, Toby. There's such delicate with the pose. And again, this girl is not a model, but you've photographed her in such a way that has made her like an art face, you know? And even if she is a model, she's not like a New York model you know what i mean so it's like even if she has poses or she does small projects and blah 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 she's very elegant and the light is very inspired i mean there's small placement things with the light that you might not see but because your side light is so far around it's actually creating its own shadow eyeballs are round so this side of the eye is lit and then this side of the eye is actually in shadow because your light is too far around and it's hitting her too much from the side in order to get that half face lit like that you like you don't need to go that far you can do that with the light at like literally if this is the background and this is your subject and this is your camera position you have the light coming in too much like this the light can actually come in here fill in this area and still give you that half face and in fact give you a little bit more of a rembrandt light over there so i like what you're doing i love this little makeup detail it's very cute i noticed that right away i love the this color this color and this and it's almost like it shouldn't match because this back red isn't the same red so essentially it should clash but the way that it's photographed it looks like a painting and because it looks very painterly it's very very highbrow and i understand it it's beautiful and welcome to the show first submission so many first submissions today that is toby welcome toby you're a good shooter keep at it keep at it and give me give me give me more show me more show me more now that you're here you can never leave <laughs> cardi with his maniacal laugh <laughs> once you learn <laughs> you can never okay zeal submitted a great photo but it doesn't apply to my cover submissions zeal might not know about the um whole system that we have here where i give assignments you shoot those assignments and then we look at them um this is a photo out of a car i can see clearly that it's out of a car by how fast the bottom is moving um if you care enough about photography you have to care enough to stop get out of the car and make the photo because this 
although compositionally and all this is very beautiful, this is taking photos. And everybody with an iPhone takes photos. Taking photos is, huh, I saw this, let me take a picture. Making photos is having an idea and then executing the idea. And people will pay you to make photos, but rarely will people pay you to take photos. So what I try to teach here is how to make photos, which is have an idea and how to execute an idea. Driving a car at 100 kilometers an hour along a highway and aiming out to the right and snapping a photo is not going to make you a photographer. So I need to see more than what you just showed me. I hope that helps. All right. Um, let's look at Susan. My first submission, unedited, working on focusing and lighting. Bare minimum. <laughs> Okay, shot with a at 34 millimeter. I need you to get a better lens, Susan, than the 18 to 55. Please, 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 you get a better lens than the 18 to 55. You can buy a 50 millimeter 1.8 for $120. Please buy that and take the 18 to 55. Find your nearest window open it and just drop it out because the 18 to 55 is useless. It is. This, this lens is the worst thing to happen to photography ever is the kit lens. They put this thing in a box so you can at least take a photo the day you get your camera, but there's nothing worse for photography than this lens. It makes your photos bad. It, it's the lowest quality glass that you could possibly put between your idea and a photo. So throw it away, please do it today. Um, the, you're trying to focus on focus and lighting. And because you're lighting with LED and because you're using a lens that only goes as wide as 5.6, 5.6, like 5.6, four, 2.8, two, like that's four stops faster. That's the difference between ISO 3200, 1600, 800, 400. Now you can shoot at ISO 400 with a, with, um, a 50 millimeter versus shooting at 3,200 with this piece of shit. Please throw it away. The only reason I have one is because I have two mirrorless cameras here. And I thought maybe I could use this lens as a lens for like my broadcasting, oh my God. This lens doesn't even meet my standards for video. Instead, I use an iPhone for this camera. I use a 16 millimeter 2.8 on both of these. These are 16 millimeter lenses. And again, they're prime lenses. And they have 2.8, so they're bright enough for me to not have to blast my light. And they give me a little bit of depth of field in the background, which that lens didn't do. When you're shooting, with that lens, it opens up all kinds of problems. And you can see the problems that happen when you're shooting with a Canon Rebel at 3200. This is supposed to be a solid background. It looks like literally, it looks like a Monet. Do you know what I mean? It's become like abstract art. It's like there's so much digital noise when you're shooting a low end APS-C camera at high ISO with a kit lens. The literally same body with a 50, instantly the quality of your Rebel goes through the roof. It's because you're shooting the Rebel with the kit lens still. Please get a 50, it's gonna change everything. Next, your lighting is going to look better, be easier because you're not going to have to shoot at ISO 3200. 
and then these photo reviews won't be painful because when I look at focus, I'll actually be able to see focus, but here you don't see focus, you just see noise. And noise is because of the high ISO, which actually noise trumps focus. So when you're trying to learn lighting, you're trying to learn lighting, but you're you're putting all these object like things up against you because of unfortunately this kit lens. So if you want to learn photography, you learn photography on a 50 millimeter. That's how you learn. It gives you true ISO. It gives you, I mean, true depth of field. You can use low ISO and you start with mastering a 50 millimeter shooting natural light. And when you're trying to, when you're not quite sure about natural light stuff and you're trying to then also shoot artificial light. You remember. Artificial light is way harder. Tom Fox, welcome. Glad you joined us. Um, it's way harder to shoot artificial light as a beginner than it is to master shooting natural light and master shooting, um, master how shadows fall and stuff like that. Like once you master how shadows fall, with like existing light and the sun, doing it artificially becomes super simple. Um, I think that you're trying to do artificial light without knowing natural light. And that is thing, the reason that you're doing, and then you have things like two lights in front, there's only one sun, but because your camera sensor and your, you only get at 5.6, you now have like, that means now you need two lights from the front and then seeing double catch lights in the eyes is the most unnatural thing because there's only one sun. So double catch light, we don't light with two lights from the front. One light from the front, all the rest of the lights are rear lights. Yeah, but what about one light, one fill? No, no, no. One light, one reflector. We don't use two lights from the front. There's only one sun. So. Um, I hope that helps, Susan. Um, I think I would have liked you to have taken this bear outside to the backyard, propped it up against a wall and shot it that way um, before you start trying to mix in colored light with white light. And again, the white light is yellow because it's not color balanced properly. It just, there's white balance and there's all these other things that you're you're not sort of up to speed with yet, which just brings you just keep bringing in more problems that you don't know how to fix because you haven't mastered like fundamentals learn the first floor build a foundation of the first floor with natural light and a 50 millimeter and then main floor is like um foundation second floor starts to be artificial lighting directing people models third floor niche fourth floor business <laughs> you know what i mean you're on you're still with basement experience and trying to do second floor stuff, which is why there's gaps in understanding. I hope that helps. All right, let's look at another. I don't know if they ever end, by the way. I don't think they ever end. I honestly don't think that they ever end. Let's see how many more I got. Okay, let's look at Pazia. Pazia shooting an editorial cover. Um, so what do you do when you don't get hired to be the photographer of the event? You show up and shout out. Okay, so this she wasn't selected to be the event photographer, so she did this. This is a definite in your face. This is a great shot. Pazia. Pazia has won photo of the week. This is an excellent capture. Excellent. Let me fix my cover art here, my bad. Excellent capture, Pazia. I really, again, I know your talent. I would be pissed if you could shoot at this level and you weren't hired to do this type of photography. At the same time, I'll say you make photos. And at times you put yourself into a scenario where you're taking photos, which is beneath you. You make photos. You have ideas and you can execute them. So event coverage, live photography, there's no respect for it. Why not try to seek assignment photography that's at a bit of a higher frequency with people who have the money, who can afford you? You have the quality. Let me help you to develop the portfolio so has so it has you not having to stress about shooting shitty events when you can literally 
do your own thing that is just way cooler i'm working with a photographer his name's tom and i'm going to be bringing tom in to talk to my viewers because tom is tom is he's figured out a way to like he wasn't even a photographer he's a fire breather he breathes fire and he does these events and he added photography and turned it into a whole business so yeah there's a way that like we there's all kinds of ways that you can turn businesses and, and turn things into businesses i just think that um i didn't have that business mindset so i had to learn it and now that i have that business mindset all i want to do is share it i want everybody to know how to find opportunities to find content gaps and also how to go after high value work and unfortunately event coverage to the people who, it's not to me to the people who are hiring you you're not it's, you're not high value it's not high value work to hey this is happening i need someone to take pictures of it you can't do it okay this is still happening so you will you take pictures of it no okay what about you will you take pictures of it yes okay let's go take pictures of the thing that is happening no matter what so there's no value in event coverage as you just saw, you lost out a job to another one. For me, I don't lose out jobs like that. People hire me, they want me. I, I lose out jobs because people can't afford me. You know what I mean? And then I have the ability to lower my rates so they can afford me. You know, but people want me. They want what I can give them that no one else can give them. So therefore, I don't really have competition. You know what I mean? It's just like a different way of understanding your value. Once you understand your value, then you don't get punked out and you don't get ran over and tranched over. You know, your skills, Pazia, supersede you as an event photographer. How about that? Let me help you develop your skills even further so you can turn that into dollars. All right. So I'm going to do my best to get through as many as I can, but we cut off at nine. Stephen C says he wasn't going to submit this week, but... He wanted to see what I had to say about this nature photo. Appreciate that, Stephen C. Let's look at this as a cover. It's definitely like, Stephen, I know what you can do. Um, the, where we're lacking here is there is no real subject matter. It is a scene and I definitely see it. Now that scene is that scene worthy of selling every single thing that's inside the pages of this magazine. I don't think so. The magazine is the thumbnail, is the book cover. It's the thing that like compels you to want to open it. This is a crazy scene. It's flooding. There's water everywhere. There's ice. Like I definitely see it. And compositionally, you nailed the cover composition. But um, I also know your standards now, Stephen, and which is why you said, I don't know if I should have submitted this week, is that your standards from hanging out here and being a part of the Discord and seeing like your standards have now raised to a level where even you know, if you don't meet the standards, you're now starting to like be able to self-assess, which says a lot. It says a lot from how far that you've come. You make amazing photographs. You're super talented. Just know that it's okay to not submit. You don't have to submit if you don't have something that you're really behind. Um, but know that like, I believe in you. You can do this. Sometimes like, sometimes weeks are hard and we can't pull it together. But what I do is I challenge you to try to pull it together every week, which teaches you how to be creative on demand because art directors, photo editors, they don't give a shit what's happening in your life. Can you do it? Yes or no? If you can't, yeah, they'll hire their next favorite photographer to shoot it. They'll get a different photo, they'll get a different perspective, but both photographers they like, they'll be happy with either one of them, you know? All right, Stephen, let's look at the next shooter. Um, next is Lindsay, first submission. Niche, Western fashion. Um, my goal is to be featured in Cowgirl Magazine one day. Lindsay, I do appreciate your super niched niche, but I would love you to just open that niche up a little bit more to just say people photography, like say lifestyle photography, say location people photography. If you want to primarily shoot on location, niching it right just into cowboy lifestyle only closes you off to a whole bunch of people like me who aren't into cowboy shit 
You know what I mean? You want to appeal to everybody, not niche. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. You're not trying to appeal to everybody. That's not what I mean. But you want to appeal to a wider audience. It's just why you don't see, I don't only shoot black people or non like I shoot everybody I shoot all people and I don't just shoot on location I shoot in the studio as well so it's necessary for you to not be so niched that there's only 12 people that can hire you you know what I mean but I do appreciate that you're niched in such a way that fits in your market and where you are so you're one of those ones that should join my master class and talk a little bit about what it is that your vision is for your value business so i understand how you think you're going to make money from that niche um that's a question you guys have to ask yourself how am i going to make money from the niche that i've chosen because that's a question i'm going to ask you all right that was lindsay and by the way lindsay um i think that i didn't really review your photo um your photo let me look at um your focus your focus is okay. It definitely could be better when you're really looking at this. And now when you're seeing the, the angle of the head versus where the shadow line is, I would like either show the eyes or fully cover the eyes because she's a female. I would show the eyes. The outfit that she's wearing is cool. Um, make sure that when you're shooting females, you have them like... Take a breath in. This girl has like a flat stomach, but it's her posture that makes her look like she has like a little bit of a paunch. That's something that you have to help her with that body language because you can see she does have like an ab line, but because you caught her on the exhale, you actually have to catch people when they're on this line. You got to catch them on the inhale to make sure that like they pull in from their core. Um, as far as her body language, legs crossed. Also, her hips are twisted. Her hips are twisted this way. Like you can see how her hips are aiming, are aiming on this angle when they should be aiming forward. Um, her shoulders are also twisted. Again, you could square her shoulders up to here and have her hips squared up as well is, and still have her legs um, proper. I think that her body language is a little bit exaggerated, the horse modeled beautifully but when you look at her body language the arm up is okay the shoulder is too extra exaggerated the hand on the hip is too extra pressed it's pushing her hip twisting that way and her legs crossed the way that they're crossed um i would have this leg crossed over because of the way that her she's twist this leg has to cross over this one it's crossed the wrong way you have the wrong leg crossed over the wrong leg you has to be, the secret is how you're aiming. It's the leg, you have to have the leg crossed over that covers the gitch. Like, so if a woman is standing at you, if she's crossed one way, the front leg covers. If she crosses the other, the, the leg, it kind of reveals. It's really weird and it depends on how you're aiming at her. But this instance, her legs are crossed wrong. Um, small things, but I'm a master of body language. You have to learn body language at the same insanity that I am compositionally beautiful photo beautiful a little bit too much treatment try not to go too much on the warm tones because it already is a very warm photo you don't have to go extra extra warm overall banger I like it um, I want to see more from you and I wanted to learn more about how you want to make money from this um, niche all right I hope that helps all right, Angela, I'd like to see my work on the cover of magazines. Um, so I would like to know what your niche is. I have a feeling that you love dogs, Angela. Let's have a look at this photo as a cover. Where's my mouse? Not over there. There it is. Let's look at this as a cover. This is great, actually. I mean, I don't know you, Angela, but I, I definitely feel you as a shooter. I definitely feel you as a shooter. Small things, you got real low, which is great. In this case, I would even want you lower. So you're dropping the horizon line here low. And I definitely see the leading line that you're putting the dog into, but I still think that that leading line would still work if it was narrower 
and you were lower and also if the tree line would was lower it would actually make this dog feel even more ominous than it already is again when you're shooting up against the sky try to drop your horizon line because again look at this dog just on the sky as a background how powerful that is and then look how this band of trees breaks the dog and then now it's a second picture where we're seeing the water and the dock and all that so compositionally we have to learn how to like not put two photos in one the sky the trees and the water and the dock it's like okay let's lower perspective so my back my background shrinks and the sky becomes huge and then that's how we nail that photo technically good technically good definitely technically good it's definitely sharp i would love your photos to be the right size i know that you're new to submitting but the size is this dimension has to be 4000 pixels by 100 dpi not this size at 100 but 4000 pixels by whatever the length is but the width has to be 4000 pixels because i can't enlarge this picture to actually see it is not big enough because it's only 2000 pixels and i'm looking at it at a 4k monitor you probably made it 4000 pixels that way but that's not the instructions the instructions is 4000 pixels wide and um also the more as we progress through this year um i'm going to be more and more specific with the with the submissions and make I'm going to start giving more and more rules to how you have to deliver because this is exactly how it is when you get assignments like I need three photos which it'll only be one but I need one photo it has to be 4,000 wide and there has to be certain space leave two inches for the masthead leave one inch on all sides for cutoff and leave me plenty of room for copy like that's the the briefs that I get and then I have to make a photograph within that brief I don't give you briefs even that tight I just say shoot a cover and I hope that you'll go do the research and see what a cover means and I also say shoot a cover within your niche so you need to know how to shoot a cover. You need to know how to shoot a lifestyle picture. You need to show need to show know how to shoot in studio. You need to know how to light. Like there's certain essential skills that will make you a high value, high demand photographer. Can you do it only natural light? Sure, but you have to be at the highest, highest, highest level, like natural light. You can do it. There's lots of photographers who do it. You know, there's lots of photographers that are so amazing at natural light, artificial light still after 30 years. But again, that's not what they do. Let's look at Joseph Mike, Michelle. My submission for a cover. Um, outdoor life capture. Okay, let's have a look. Outdoor life capture from Joseph Michel. Let's have a look at this. <clears throat> this is now back to an 8x12, so full frame, no crop. As a cover, as a winter wonderland photo, this says it all for me. Like, I do like it. The only problem is it's that it's it's not very optimistic it's very gray it's very dreary and it's very like ugh. you know what i mean i mean it looks like canada at this time of the year up north for sure um that's my only thing is just other than this chair being like the subject it, it's pretty it's pretty dreary and if you put your thumb over your eye and take that chair out of the photo it actually becomes like there's not enough here for me to be like compelled to to read the story compelled to open the magazine compelled to read the book you know what i mean just because you know and again these images are difficult i definitely know where you were trying to make this fit but there needs to be more elements and it has to be a less gray feeling in order for this to pop on the cover like i think that we want it to i know your talent as a photographer joseph i know how well you shoot you've won photo of the week like a matter of fact i think you won a photo of the year um so i know you have talent i know that you can shoot just know that like the bar is high 
the bar is high like my bar is high and like my bar isn't higher than most people it's not like i'm like some guy who's just judging you exceptionally hard i'm just saying the industry bar is super high dude so like wow so i'm trying to help you guys all come up to speed at an industry level because i don't know too many people like yeah it's hard it's hard okay let's get into mr nelson jr this is my editorial magazine cover i don't have a particular niche but i like the floral business interesting let's have a look at mr nelson jr floral niche this has been pre-cropped for me to 9 by 12. i definitely like the open vibe like compositionally the fact like this sign the way that the flowers kind of act as the base the way that you've given me lots of place for copy i like this i like it works the dark background works although we definitely have some like light that is catching because this is i wouldn't say it's velveteen it's like some sort of a shinyish material but it's definitely kicking back light but in the background back here it just actually works as a texture which i quite like what i want you to look at is the open sign and the focus on the open sign versus the focus on the flowers the flowers is actually where you locked your focus on but because this is a relatively low light scene because likely you lit it with led the light is low shallow depth of field becomes impossible for you to get the open sign in focus tack and the um the flowers in focus tack so although compositionally strong slow shutter speed in this you don't have to you can put it on the tripod and shoot at one second you can shoot at two seconds at f22 in order to achieve the f that you need with when you're shooting something that's no people so don't be limited by just hand like what the camera says to hand hold which is like a 30th or a 50th or a 60th or whatever put it on a tripod slow it right down and shoot at f22 cool i hope that helps all right all right are why are we uh connected it seems did i have any sort of dish connection here i hope not getting a little error here in my obs uh, studio hope we're okay still seems like we are seems like we are um my bit rate is lower than expected it says okay we're good all right let's look at let's see i i really we are honestly getting to the end i promise let's look at g is him um 1dx 85 g is him shooting a cover definitely nailed the cover composition g you definitely did you definitely did i appreciate the color tones definitely lighting lighting i see one light i see one light i see two lights like i don't know if you're trying to do a martin scholler but know that like martin scholler's light trying to get that light who learn like it's the most imitated light ever and the cat eye catch lights i definitely see the attempt we kind of missed it definitely kind of missed it and also just how it ends up looking quite flat here and it gives actually like no life in the face there's no shape it's just the catch lights become the photo and you can't have the catch lights being the high like it has to be compelling light which comes from shaping the face from a single source lighting with lighting the face with two different sources there's one guy who does that and Scholler is the best and if you see you'd have to literally see his setup in order to know how he does it again like I said with um Jill Greenberg's light I'm not going to teach people how to light exactly like a signature style that another photographer does even if i know how to do it i don't think it's inconducive in in you having 
original thoughts, original light, and an original style. Um, try to lean away from the cat eye double strip. Um, I just discovered martinscholler.com lighting, okay? Because honestly, it's like every photographer, the first time they see Martin Scholler, they try to do it. And it's just, yeah, be original. Be original and try to find your style. When I said the thing that should keep you up at night is your visual signature, imitation is where people start first, but that's a slippery slope because you don't have your own identity if you're basing your identity on someone else's. You have to look at tons of different sources and then decipher a bunch of different styles and filter a bunch of different inputs into what it is that you do. I hope that helps. Again, compositionally, yes. Um, compositionally, yes. What she's wearing, okay. Like winter outfit indoors in studio works only if you're selling that coat, but you're not showing enough of the coat to sell it. So again, the cover composition you've nailed, the the monochromatic, um, reduce the amount of colors, like all of those things you've nailed, just the light. I want you to be way different with your light. I think you could push it way, way, way further. That is G is him. All right, so let's see. We got like a handful or so left. Let's look at Explorers. So I like going to places of culture. You went to the Cleveland Museum of Art, Explorers PA. So many of you trying to sell me on this. I have no subject to shoot, so I'm going to just shoot a thing and then try to wordsmith it into something that is an editorial cover assignment. Although, yes. This works as a magazine cover, Explora. I know you have talent. I know maybe the week got away from you and you tried to like, but no one's hiring you to shoot museum busts for magazine covers. Do you know what I mean? It's gonna happen exactly zero times. So the more reps that you get in actually shooting the type of editorial assignments that you would actually get, the faster that you can progress each time that you do like grabs again it's just the composition yes the background yes but it's still you're taking a photo you're not making a photo do you want me to talk about light how your light is the existing pot lights that are just above just pushing whatever light that's on this statue that happens to be there because it's a display do you know what i mean it's just it's compositionally taking a photo that you can't pick this up and put it in a different place you can't relight it you can't rotate it move it do anything that's because it's not something it's 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 a bust it's just it's a face yes but it's like you're trying to sell me on this is your editorial offering do you remember when that one photographer said, hey, this is the cover to Behind the Picture Travel Magazine, and boom, and it was like, oh, wow, that is, that's the cover of a travel magazine. Yes, that's it exactly. That's the level of expectations that I have from you. And it's the level of expectations that you have to have for yourself because this, although it fits the format, is still mailing it in, which unfortunately doesn't doesn't hurt me. It's just, it hurts you, you know what I mean? So. Try harder, please, for you, not for me. <laughs> okay, let's go to Dreadfully Blessed. So um, this is Dreadfully, and Dreadfully shoots cars. That's kind of um, his vibe and his angle. Dreadfully, I really want you to lean in so hard on cars. You, you have a very interesting perspective. The way that you compose, the way that you see photographs is very new and it's fresh. And, and because it's fresh and it's new, you're going to work. You're going to work in this industry, but I need, there's like, I also like, I feel like you're a wild horse. Like, it's like, I gotta like, re like rein you in at times and like, really focus you like how do you burn a hole in a piece of paper with a magnifying glass you hold it in one spot in the right angle under the sun and you hold it there and you just hold it there 
And you just hold it there. And you just hold it there. And eventually it starts to smoke. But guess happen if, what guess what happens if you move it before it starts to smoke? Guess what happens if you move it after it starts to smoke? but it doesn't start to catch. Like, guess what happens if you move it after it starts to catch? It catches, but it doesn't burn. Like, you have to stay in one spot. You gotta focus in one spot and just gas pedal down. If you focus just on car photography, car lifestyle, people with cars, like luxury cars, like car, 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 cars dreadfully, like, which I know that you're trying to, but I'm trying to like get you doing that but also everything at the highest level without letting anything that's below your bar slip out. I'm telling you, now the packaging will be perfect and then the money comes because you become a sure thing. You become undeniable. But look at this as a magazine cover. Look at this crazy splash of yellow that I don't even know what the fuck that is. Excuse my language. But what I can tell you, it's a great spot to drop copy. It's a great spot to drop text without like without ruining the sensibility of this car. Do you never shoot a car on such a strange angle unless you're shooting a car on such a strange angle and it actually works like it does here. So again, there's times like there's times I don't understand photos that people are trying to make and then there's times that I 100% understand photos and this is one of them. Dreadfully good job. And again, I don't play favorites. I don't play favorites. You might think that you're my favorite and then you drop me a shit photo and you'll see, you realize I'm just judging you against you. I'm trying to judge you against you. Everybody who submitted photos today in the last hours, dreadfully blessed, submitting at five minutes to six. Edwin, five minutes to six. Turtle, five minutes to six. My brother, five minutes to six. I, 617 er, after the cutoff after the cutoff after the cutoff so i am looking at two more photos and josh you are the last one um the cutoff is now wednesday because this happens and i do and i get frustrated and i don't want to get frustrated um i want to stay nice and positive between the whole thing but this is this isn't school this is my time. You know what I mean? This is my time. This isn't school. This is actually just me getting frustrated because you're towing the line. Don't tow the line with me when I'm trying to help you. Don't tow the line. And also, by the way, secret time, you don't want my, your photo be the very last one after I've been reviewing photos for three hours because then I start getting short. You know what I mean? So submit early. And like, you'll see, oh, okay, cool. Cardi's way happier when I'm not submitting at three minutes to six. All right, so photo, focus, 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 focus. Close eye, out of focus. Far eye, also out of focus. Um, him holding the glasses, I don't know if he could have been doing something cheesier. Seriously, him holding the glasses, cheesy as fuck. Don't, don't, don't do that. And also don't do that because cheesy poses, it's up to you, the photographer. And again, I, I'm just making a video about literally, and the line is this, do not let your subjects who don't know what to do in front of the camera, do things on their own in front of the camera. And then you shoot them because what you get is cheese, especially if you're new, you're new, don't know what you're doing. They're new don't know what they're doing and then smash those two things together and make photos. It means that it's just an exercise in futility. One of you has to know what to do. So if you're shooting and you're new, shoot people who are experienced about being in front of the camera. If you're both inexperienced, then you have to be the one with references, photos, say, hey, look at this pose. We're going to do this exactly, which is no pose. The pose is no pose. So if you're shooting people and you're doing portraits and they're posing, and they're men, I wanna punch this guy in the face. That's what I want, that's my feeling. From looking at this photo, I wanna punch him in the face. Cause he's like, do you know what I mean? We have to shoot men in a way that's likable. And guys that pose is cheesy. So if you're a guy photographing another guy, don't let them pose, photograph them how they are. And you'll get photos that look like Details Magazine instead of look hokey and cheesy. Look at Details Magazine. Details. 
um, magazine, da -da -da -da. again, how would you know what to look at to shoot men? Look at the most popular men's magazine in the world. Look at Details Magazine. Look at Images, Details Magazine, and then look at the Details Man. The Details Man. Where do you see the Details Man holding onto his sunglasses like that? The Details Man is a desirable, cool guy. So you want to shoot and actually get hired? Make guys look cool. Don't make them look cheesy. And for God's sakes, do not let guys do cheesy stuff and then just take photos. Like, honestly, it just lowers your value as a photographer. Stop it from happening immediately. As soon as they touch their face, as soon as they do some cool pose, be like, ah, what are you doing? Stop doing that. It's totally cheesy. And that just, just let them be, just hang out, just be. And then again, shooting guy, letting him wear sunglasses inside. Ugh. Ugh. Sunglasses inside, bro, under artificial light. And they're not Prada. They're not Gucci. They're not Dior. They're not $3,500 sunglasses. They're cheap sunglasses and you're glorifying them, which is hokey. So again, that's my review. When you post two second skin retouching. Okay. The light. Okay. The dappling in the background with a guy, a little Christmassy, a little feminine, and the color balance is too yellow, too yellow, too yellow, too yellow. My skin, black guy, not that yellow. It's because this is tungsten light and it's balanced for daylight, which is why it's yellow. Those are all kinds of things right there for your cover. I hope, um, I hope that registered. I hope it didn't hurt too much. Um, here we go. Turtle. Niche. Turtle does aerial drone photography, surveying, and the like. Turtle. Black and white. Very, I like you going out on a limb with the black and white. It's necessary for you to do that. It's necessary for you to try and push into new boundaries. This photo would, I think, have been stronger and more interesting in color unless you felt like there was too many distracting colors. I think that this is a strong photo in color. I'd like to see it in color. In black and white, it works. There's room for copy. It's a very interesting perspective. It's a very interesting perspective. I would like in this particular case, almost for you to be higher. I would love you to see to be a little bit higher so the items are a little bit smaller so I can put text without I don't know. I, I, I think you've nailed it. I think you nailed it. I want to see more cover executions from you because you being a aerial photographer, never on the ground, your photography composition is, is difficult. You have to do it in a very different way. So I want to see more reps of you doing this kind of stuff with pure structure. Your lines are amazing. Your lines are very straight turtle, like great discipline, which is incredibly hard to do when you're flying. So again, I see you and I see all your progress. Good deal. All right. In our last, that was our last submission, guys. That was the last one under the wire. We did it. Look, it only took three hours. It only took two hours. <laughs> 52 minutes and some seconds guys i hope this brought you value um i never want to like not review photos i love reviewing photos i love helping people at the same point though i think that i think that too many people um they relinquish control too many photographers oh the subject oh you've been photographed once okay cool you know what to do just pose just pose. What are you talking about? Pose. Like, I I feel like, um, I feel like also getting over their head, trying things at that. Like, and again, it's necessary. It's necessary for you to put yourself outside your comfort zone. It's necessary for you to try things that are hard. Like, it's necessary. But at the same point, you can do it more successfully with more research. More research. I don't think enough photographers look at reference material before they shoot. When I started. I would have a Vogue magazine on the floor when I was shooting and I would flip pages I'd, fl I'd be, oh my God, look at this pose. And I'd show the model. I'd be like, look at this pose. And then the model would like do the pose like exactly. And I'd kind of, sh and, and okay, I'd try to vary it and make it mine. But like 
that's all I would do. Okay, that was a great one. Okay, now like, oh my God, look at this one. And like with a guy, same thing. Oh, buy a details magazine, flip, flip. You see that you don't see people holding their glasses, people looking at their watch, people like you don't see that because it's cheesy. So on your journey, being a photographer, you're allowed to learn at the same time, but while not shooting cheesy photos, you know what I mean? And that happens from you looking at more photographs than just your own. Too many people just look at their own photos. Like look at people who are at the highest level and see, hmm, wow, I don't, I haven't done any poses in that style. A matter of fact, all my stuff is very posed and this photographer is shooting something that seems like there's no poses at all. Like, oh, I think if you actually look at mag, look by Vogue, look and see like, wow, the trend is with men unposed by Vanity Fair. What's the trend with portraits right now? By Vanity Fair, wow, the trend with portraits is skin looks like this, poses are like this. There's not a lot of people holding their face. Like you look at these things and then you're thinking when I'm shooting and someone does this, you're like, ah, 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 don't touch your face. That's not a thing. And, and you know it's a thing, you know it's not a thing because you've looked at Vogue. You've looked at what's happening in Japan. You've looked at what's happening in Europe, in Paris, in Milan. And it's not just fashion, it's all photography filters down that way all of it whatever your niche is there's a photographer that's shooting it at the highest 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 level so why are you not looking at their work to see what they did to get them there not looking at their work it means that you're blind which means you're trying to do a task without having an idea what the end goal should look like like you want to be a photographer, but you need to have to have an idea what the end work looks like. If you're setting your camera at ISO 3200, here's the thing. If you're setting your, your camera at ISO 3200, know this. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. So when I'm seeing your photo at ISO 3200 and I'm seeing noise, there's a reason why no one does that. It's because of the noise. So then you have to figure out how to make it so you can shoot photos, not at 3,200, not higher than 800, which means I got to understand light. I got to understand how, where to put my subjects in order to achieve those readings, because what I've been doing hasn't been working. Guys, that is my sermon. I do this every Thursday, starts at six o'clock. I go until I'm done. I give up my Thursday nights to do this. I've been doing this for three years. I used to do this for five people. Now I'm doing this. I used to let people submit as many photos as they want. And I would just look at 10, 12, 13, 15 photos from people. Now I look at one because the shit's blowing up and it's only going to get bigger. And my requirements for submissions and the type of expectations that I have and the parameters. If you don't follow the parameters, I just won't look. If I click a picture, it's not 4,000 pixels, next person. Because it makes it super quick for me to just process of elimination the people who don't follow rules and can't follow instructions. Okay, I got a thousand photos here to try to pick photos of the week. So I am going to pick some photos of the week. It is going to be difficult, but I'm going to do it. And then I'm going to give you your assignment. And I already know what it is. I wrote it down right here on a post-it note so I wouldn't forget. So don't think that I've forgotten. Thank God you 90 are still here. Let me look at some photos of the week. And for me, a couple of these are so clear. They jumped out again. A couple of these are so clear. A couple of these become a bit difficult for me to like, I can't reward when you don't follow every single instruction. So there's no rewards for every single instruction. There's not really rewards for shooting work two years ago and submitting it now because it fits for an editorial assignment. No rewards for that. I'm giving rewards to the photographers that I think, um, Number one, shot this for this. Number two, um, really understood the assignment. Number three, progressed, like completely progressed. Um, number four, blew me away. And um, number five, really tried hard. 
so I'm just bringing up some considerations here. Please stand by. If you're wanting to know while I'm doing this what this week's assignment is, I can tell you. This week's assignment is shooting a double page spread. You are shooting a double page spread. A double page spread is a horizontal photo. A horizontal photo across two pages, meaning you're holding your camera this way. Keep in mind, double page spreads, there is no crop, meaning it has to be the exact proportion of your camera full. Also, double page spreads, there is a gutter in the center of the magazine. So when you open the magazine, the pages go in like this. So if you put your subject, I'll say this once again. If you put your subject in the center, it will fall on the gutter. So double page spread. How you're going to find inspiration is look, open some magazines, look at ma pictures that fit between two pages and what are the qualities that they have. Um, double page spread. You need to submit one double page spread. The deadline is Wednesday midnight. Wednesday midnight, I am turning off the submissions folder. So you will actually not be actually able to even see the folder, let alone submit. And I'm going to continually be turning the folder off, turning the folder on over the course of the week to control these submissions. And I am getting close to what I feel are um, photos of the week. I have some real good ones here. I'm trying to make it so, and again, I edit these like in my head mentally as I'm going through here. Okay, I think that we're there. Um, yes, yes. On the fence. Yes, yes. On the fence. On the fence. Okay, on the fence, you're off. Yes, sir, um, yes. On the fence, how many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. Fuck, there can only be five. Okay, there's gonna be six. Um, fuck. There's going to be six, but um, starting in no particular order, these are your photos of the week. Are you ready? Are you ready? Photo of the week. Starting with photo of the week number one. Photo of the week number one. You ready? Here we go. I just wanted to make sure I had the name right. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Photo of the week number one. Goes to new submitter. Her name is Maria. Let's go, Maria. Photo of the week. Maria, congratulations. First submission, first photo of the week. Wicked, wicked picture. So good. Congratulations, Maria. That tells you you need to keep submitting and stay close. Our next photo of the week goes to, I don't need to look for the name because I know who it is. And guess what? The women are dominating early. Are you ready? The women are dominating. This photo of the week goes to Anna. Unbelievable, Anna. So happy with you. This made me so happy. This photo made me so happy. I'm so proud of you. This is so nuanced. The light is so excellent. I'm so proud of you, Maria. I mean, Anna and Maria, proud of you too. <laughs> that was Anna photo of the week. Oh, I got to get this name right because I was on the fence about this one and I decided this one deserved to be the sixth. I never give six. I give three. I give one photo of the week, but impressed me. Even if I had things to say about you, very impressed with this photo. This photographer, I almost pushed the wrong button. I almost revealed it early. This photographer, his name is Hard Drive. Hard Drive recording. Photo of the week in the editorial magazine cover category let's go you understand i was on the fence because of how i felt about the fruit in the background but i see potential and i know that 
this is going to shift something in you because you know that I see something in you. Congratulations. Next photographer, photo of the week. I don't need to know. I don't need to look at this name because I already know who it is. I don't need to look at this name because I give this guy photo of the weeks often. And my expectations and the bar for this guy, your my bar is so high for you. I almost considered not giving you photo of the week because you get it too often. And I'm trying to raise your bar. <laughs> Next photo of the week goes to Tony. Let's go, Tony, with this shot right here. Congratulations. An amazing magazine cover of Behind the Picture Travel magazine. Incredible cover. Incredible cover. Tony, congratulations. Wow. Um, two more. This photographer, I know this guy too. Our next photo of the week. A guy who's been trying so hard and been trying for so long and sends me DMs that makes me want to cry. When I watched his video, I watched it back with my girlfriend and I almost cried. This guy touches me so much. Every time he speaks, he touches me. And, um... Yeah, I'm really, really proud of this photographer. This one, this is Romeo, baby. Romeo, congratulations, buddy, photo of the week. I'm so proud of you. So proud of you, Romeo. So amazing, man, honestly. So proud of you, dude. Wow. Our last photo of the week, guys. Our last photo of the week goes to another new photographer and somebody who I'm just getting to meet. I'm just getting to know. I know that this photographer, um, this little bit of accolades is going to be a bit of a bump. It's gonna be something that is going to help this shooter know that I believe in them and that they have something. And that's something I see. I'm a different sort. And um, I'm very proud of you for making this photo. Um, I know who you are, but you don't know who you are yet. Ah! New photographer, new submission. Photo of the week goes to Toby. Congratulations, Toby. Photo of the week. Amazing. Amazing. Just artful. Very, very, very beautiful. I had some critiques to say. I have some nuances to say, but um, wow. Wow really really great guys those are the photos of the week your assignment if you choose to do it is to shoot a horizontal double page spread this double page spread i'm going to have a layout so i'm going to drop the layout over top it's going to show you where the gutter is it's going to show you exactly how your two pictures and two pages in a magazine will fit i will say again you cannot change the proportions of your full frame which means if you put your thing here instead of here to offset it properly, you can't do it. You can't reposition a horizontal frame. It doesn't work because you can't slide it because you don't have anything over here to slide it to. So your horizontals have to be perfect. My suggestion, shoot lots of frames. Shoot lots of frames and also editorial for a magazine in your niche you've seen how i judge photos you've seen how i judge photos you've seen how it's not very easy to mail it in here it's not very easy to try to make something work as this you're allowed to do that if you've shot something within the last week that also fits within this but i like when you go out and make photos based on my input so double page spread two pages in a magazine, nothing important, runs up the center. How are you gonna figure it out? That is up to you. Guys, I love you all. Thank you for watching. See you on the next one. I appreciate you all for staying long. Oh, I had over a hundred for such a long time tonight. The fact that we ended this episode with 89 people watching is absolutely fantastic. Know that you just watched me three hours commercial free. 
Do you understand how much money I would have made in ad revenue if I had have played commercials during this live stream? But I don't do that because I don't do this for money. I do this to help you get to the next level with your photography. And I have a membership system. My membership system, these names scrolling across the top of your screen, all the people who you see in chat that have crowns next to their name, those are the people who make it so I can do commercial free streams. My members propel this channel. My members, I will do photo reviews for until the wee hours of the morning if that is what makes you guys get to that next level. If you became a subscriber recently, your name is scrolling across the bottom of the screen. We'd love to see you scroll across the top of the screen. Thank you guys so very much. If you're not in my Discord, the system doesn't work. If you're not on my A Life Behind the Camera mailing list, the system doesn't work. And for those special, special ones, you've joined my master class. You've paid $50 and you get one-on-one -on -one instruction. Well, you know, one-on group instruction with me this Sunday. Emails for the news, for the mailing list goes out. I mean, for the masterclass goes out tomorrow with links to join. Consider joining, go to the Cardi method at substack.com or just go to my mailing, my regular one or my website. It's everywhere. I love you guys.